All right, welcome, 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 truth seekers. I hope each and every you have already been having a great week. This is considered hump day, but I will say, depending on what you do, it is just Wednesday. And I'm here with my friend, uh, Reverend Michael Carter, and we're going to have a great conversation tonight. And we're going to really just have a conversation, but we're going to talk about, uh, of course, as we have been leaning hard into, you know, the aliens and what about the the, the descriptions and scriptures that's in the Bible and is there any reference points and should we be getting prepared for what I think is going to be something that especially in the communities are going to be a little difficult for some people to swallow. Now, having said that, tonight we're going to kind of feature Project Black, which I talked about all the time, which is the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. And uh, Reverend Carter is part of the team with us with that. And part of the initiative of us really getting out here to the community. So we'll discuss a little bit about the impact and the importance of where we're going to go with this. But in the meantime, get his perspective on uh, what's going to happen when disclosure really hits the fan. Uh, basically, with him being a pastor and actually currently preaching today and and, 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 and helping people to deal with with what is going on with society, I think that is important to get his perspective on certain scriptures at some point. What would he uh, preach a sermon now past what we would think about tomorrow or back in the future or the past, whatever. We're going to just tie it all in uh, so we can do that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about 45 minutes, and then I will then open up some dialogue in the chat for some of you who have questions. Uh, so he said he'll stay here with an extra 30 minutes for that. So we're going to respect his time. All my moderators, I want y'all to moderate uh, really, really well today for those people because we're not attacking Christianity at all. Uh, and we do not want to, uh, you know, people that want to disrespect our guest and my friend, to, to be exact. So I'll be a little more vigilant today and a little more protective than normal uh, and, and, and hold that face. So I just want y'all to know I'm growling already. So I want the dogs of the moderators beautiful women that are moderators as well to go in full blitz tonight. You know what I'm saying? And, and do y'all thing. And so we're going to do that. So listen, Reverend Carter, I want to thank you for being here. I, I could go over the, the entire bio, you know, and, and I think, but I'd rather have you in a, in a short time. Yeah. I want you to kind of let people know who yeah. and what and, and, and everything, because first of all, You've been featured on Ancient Aliens several times, and so you're well, out there. I we mean, both you've got have, some, brother. We, we well, both we both have. have. We, we both have. And I will <laughs> say this, though. I will start out by saying for most people that I, when I first started my, my, my journey, I got this book two years ago and, and reached out to uh, Reverend Carter. And, man, I tell you, he responded, and we've been like this ever since. Ever since. And he's really... He's really have navigated me a lot in the in the area and space of what I would call the the commercializing of this topic, you know, because, you know, he's he had the experience. So I would ask him about TV and then I would go into the scriptures and, you know, him uh, really practicing Reiki and what he does. Just, it's just been a real tremendous to have a friendship uh, that we have created, man. And, and I just want to tell you and I tell everybody out there is that. You know, one thing he's always told me, and I'm going to share it with y'all. He says, Ryder, keep your mouth shut. Trust no one. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. will stab you in the back. And I had oh. it to happen, right? And he, and out of all people, he didn't say, I told you so, brother. He just said, okay, lesson learned. Let's move forward. <laughs> Let's move forward. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a dirty business sometimes, man. It really is. Yeah. But, but brother, I'm just glad to see you. Uh, hey. You know, we talk and uh, and so you're my friend. So it's no Reverend Carter. It's Michael. And OK, let's let's go in on. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We, we're going to you and I have talked hours and hours and days <laughs> about Project Black and the yes. impact in the, in the community for that. And one of the things I want to to really you've been doing this a long time. And of course, you have a. Uh, mixed congregation and but you've also been out here and have dealt with people at different conferences and everything and is there any do you see any difference of the route that we need to take with project black to really expose 
the communities because I feel my personal belief is a taboo subject and there is some limitations to uh, getting this word out. And, and, and what is your thoughts there first? Oh, my God, that's a great question. Yeah. You know, I think that what we're doing, um, I remember when you brought this up and, you know, it was it was exciting because I know people had talked about it, but you were actually, um, you know, going forward with this. I, I there are two things. I, 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 especially for our community, how can I say, you can still keep your Jesus, you can still keep your faith tradition and still acknowledge the existence of UFOs. I think that is crucial because people from all stripes, Roderick, when, when, I, when I get emails or texts or what have you, people say, black, white, rich, whatever. Can I still be blank? Most of them are Christian and still believe in this. Is this demonic? Can I still, you know, and they're wrestling. And it's absolutely yes, because the early church fathers, Origen, Justin, Marcion, they were, they wrestled with this, but they knew it. They knew that these beings existed and they were wrestling. What do we do with the Old Testament versus the New Testament? So mm -hmm. I think that that is crucial, that you can, st you don't have to give up anything to acknowledge this phenomenon. A lot, wow. a, a, a lot of us think that um, we were told that all of these beings are demonic, but it's not true. The, the, the scriptures, and we're going to go over some of that, are plain. There's some of them who wanted to keep us, like in the book, you know, in Genesis and whatever, wanted to keep us so ignorant we didn't know that we were naked. But then there were others who came, the, 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 the angel who visits Daniel in the lion's den, the ones who come to Miriam, Jesus's mother, and to Elizabeth, her, her cousin, with John the Baptist, telling them, you're going to have a child. This is going to be a gifted person. Um, this is what you need to do. They came at, at times when they were needed. And so you see both. And then there are beings who are just neutral who are just kind of watching, seeing how we're going to evolve, if we're going to evolve. And so you can hold on to your faith, but once you start seeing what we're talking about, um, you can't go back to reading the Bible the, the old way. You told me last week about Tim Burchett, who was on News Nation, who is a Republican senator uh, from uh, Tennessee, and he, he was on. I watched him today. He, he says, this has nothing, this is not deterring me from being a Christian. But he talked about Ezekiel. He talked about Elijah. So um, I think once we can grab that, it's like, oh, you can lay your burden down. You don't have to give up anything that you believe. If anything, it may deepen your faith because our ancestors were dealing with these beings and walked among them. Um, and so one day we may be walking among them again very soon. Wow. So we may view discussions of aliens taboo within the black church, but how can Project yeah. Black bridge that gap between faith and the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, I think by doing what you're doing now, putting it out there, risking um you know, you and I will be talking. I will be telling them about, uh, you know, my experiences as an experiencer, how I went from the, the, the Baptist tradition to where I am now. I haven't given up anything. I had to wrestle a bit. Uh, it made me a little uncomfortable. But when you're growing, those things are, are, are supposed to happen. But I think the information has to get out of the, out there because the dominant culture has the information. And in some ways, they're light years ahead of us because we're not at the conferences. Um, uh, we're, we're, you know, you and I and, you know, Brother Carson, you know, there's a few of us that get a little limelight, but it's not a lot. But it's our job to come back and bring that to the community because we're behind the eight ball, but we don't have to stay behind the eight ball. We just need to have the information. A lot of the stuff that we're talking about, um, you know, people are just hearing. But I want to I say this, and I want to be fair. 
Um, a lot of clergy suspect what you and I are talking about. Hmm. A lot of them know it. They know the translations. They know. So I, I'm saying this because I don't want people to think that it's always this big conspiracy that, you know, I don't want to talk about it. I got to keep it. But, you know, I had to go through it. I almost lost my job. Um, you don't want to lose your job. Yeah. And so this is taboo. You use the word two or three times at the beginning. And so, you know, people, you don't want to lose your tenure. You don't want to lose your gig talking <laughs> about this. Uh, and so you're going to, mm -hmm. even with churches, you have to go, uh, you have to see how far you can go with your congregation. Because if you don't, you'll split your church. I don't talk about this at church. I mean, I, I touch on it and it's an open secret. You know, people say, oh, I saw him on TV or, or, or his podcast, that, you know, but I don't talk about it as a sermon topic on a Sunday because I would destroy my church. I would split my church. Half my church would say, this guy's a nut. The other half would say, he's on to something. Why would I do that? And that's not what they hired me for. I do bring it up, but I don't, it's not a UFO church. I'll put it like that. Um, mm. But I've had people come to my church who said, we were, in, we were in North Carolina. We saw you on Ancient Aliens or we heard your podcast and they come. And I have to say, well, you may be disappointed because we're not talking about that today. We're talking about blah, blah, blah. Um, so, but I want to put that out there that there's some people they, they don't talk about it because they would lose their job. They would lose their livelihood. If you're a professor, you lose your tenure. If you're if you're a minister, you'll lose your church. If you're in any other, it's still a taboo subject. But what you're doing, what you're doing now, what we're going to do with Project, Project Black is we're going to get that information out there. We're going to take that risk. And we're going to say, not only is this true, but we'll tell you why it's true. And then we bring people up to speed. I think that's really well said because I don't think uh, there's a few people who are close to me enough to know, but I don't think a lot of people know the impact uh, and the pressure uh, and the collateral damages when I started this thing and said, let's, that's really uh, for me personally first and, and like, yeah. okay, because I got hit hard in the ufology community because mm -hmm. it was like, why are you bringing race into this? And I got tired of trying to explain people, no, it's not about that. We've got an area that's disproportionately reported. And we, you know, if they, if they visualize a pie and if you want the whole pie, but if you look over here, there's a slice of this pie, lack of information, lack of diversity of stories, then we're not getting the full story, no matter what exactly. we hear out here. Exactly. And, and exactly. people don't see, they don't understand that. So if I can fill some of the gap in and just maybe what happens if just maybe there are a couple of stories over here that's never been told that pieces something over here that was a mystery. And now we get a little more clarity, but it's like, I, I can't get it sometimes. It's almost like an ownership of the experience. Some of these people mm -hmm. want to have their own ownership of yes. the experience, right? Yes, and yes. I get it all the time, and but I do see there's a change, you know, and I and I do see that it's it's one of those things. So I lose, I can't say I lose a lot of sleep, but I do think about it. I do try to make sure the right people who want a position, and I've had some people said, no, I don't have nothing to do with that, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it, it on all levels it touches, you know, something that's a little more emotional for people. Now we got taboo. Now we got religion. Now we got. Uh, social implications. It's just so much in it. But I think it's uh, as I continue to push forward. And then when you came aboard and other people, it just made it stronger and stronger uh, from there. I have another question, too. So, for example, um, if we think about alien disclosure in the gospel, so let's imagine Ooh. alien disclosure becomes mainstream. Ooh. How would you approach preaching a, preaching a gospel? gospel with this new reality and would any with the rest of the pastors accept it even though it's mainstream I, well i don't think everybody would accept it when i i grew up in the american baptist tradition african american baptist tradition not southern baptist american like dr king american baptist howard thurman mm. those folks 
So, and that was my lifeblood. And when I met, when I read about Dr. King, when I read about uh, Howard Thurman, they weren't talking about this, but they, they had a liberal, um, and I mean that in a positive sense of the word, um, they were very progressive. I didn't realize Dr. King didn't, real, didn't really believe that Jesus rose physically from the dead. Neither did Howard Thurman. And I, it blew my mind that they had that freedom of thought, but they could still use those stories and make them relevant. Right. The way, to answer your question, the way I look at it differently now, but I always, I look, people are leaving churches in droves. Mm. America is becoming more secular. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But what, what people are saying is, even atheists, I don't believe in God. But they're saying, I don't believe in the God that most people believe in. Right. And so I would try to get people to see that Yahweh, Yahweh is not God. Yahweh is a being from somewhere else. And a lot of the problems that we have in the world today, is because of I mean, and the reason a lot of people are leaving churches is they're saying, I cannot worship a deity. I cannot worship a God who is genocidal, who says you can kill uh, women and children, who uh, will destroy a whole city, nuke a whole city. I'm speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah because people aren't being, they, they can't believe that. And I'm saying that a lot of the problems we have today, we're looking at genocide in several places around the globe. And we think, as we say as human beings, that is the highest crime you can commit. But yet we worship a God who does it quite regularly in the, in the Bible. So if, you're, if you worship a monster, then you're going to have to be apologetic for them. Then it's okay for you to be a monster. If you worship someone who's violent, if you worship someone who has anger management problems, if you worship someone who's abusive, then you're going to be that way. And so that's where I would start. Let's look at the Old Testament. And let's look at the, some of the translations, for instance, Elohim, where plural, where we see the word God. When we look at Yahweh and the things that he does, the things he's obsessed with, does this sound like an all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent uh, um, deity? Or does this sound like someone who's got flaws just like we do who 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 is who is struggling who is trying to get people to, to control a group of people about who who they who they sleep with about who they uh, marry uh, 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 who 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 condone slavery in the book of Leviticus how can this be if you notice Jesus doesn't mention Yahweh not once in the New Testament. Not once does he mention Yahweh, but he does talk about Yahweh in a disparaging way. So, so I would get us to look at this because we weren't taught to look at this. We, it, it, you know, it's like our eyes were wide shut. But everything that I'm saying, and I can give you chapter and verse as we move along, will tell you that, wait a minute, is this is this an almighty God or is this a being from somewhere else? That's where I mm. would start with. That's wow. where I would start with. And I can back it up. Well, that's why I was telling you today about, you know, watching uh, brother Tim Burchett and, you know, they didn't get into, they didn't get into um, Gilgamesh. They didn't get into, the translation uh, uh, of Elohim. They didn't get into the mythologies of it. They kind of stayed in this box. So I, I applaud the progress that that you know that they did bring the topic up, but it's they they didn't even skim the surface. Do you think they was being a little 
cautious of tiptoeing in the water because after all, you know, the, the, the powers that be can shut that down. Uh, you, you're talking yeah, phone yeah. calls from the, the advertisers and, and can turn all that situation around immediately yeah, if, yeah. They're, if they don't exist. But although I'm saying this, but I also see that the, the media is getting in on it. There's more alien type commercials. You know, even during the Super Bowl, there were six or seven of them, you know, mm-hmm. portals and all of it is though that they're getting people with this visualization yeah. or yeah. maybe they're popularizing, you know, this thing. But I, I think it's 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 something to to really look close to. Now, what I'm, my concern and I'm sure we both share the same concern is if they are going to filter and disseminate this information, even in a slow push we still got a zero push within our communities and in indigenous communities to uh, put this out. And and I'm just trying to figure out something tells me and not just the spider senses, but every other in, you know, in, in my, my gut and all of this says that if this was just to go boom, then there will be some communities out there who will just be, just will be out of control mentally because mm-hmm. yeah, I already feel that, our younger generation are uh, what I call emotionally and religiously bankrupt. You know, they're, they're just not they They look at the parents and they're going like, this is not it. And I know we're not talking about church, but I'm saying, but it does lead them to then begin to at least open their mind to the possibility mm-hmm. of the world is bigger in, you know, the extraterrestrial possibilities, yeah. you know, all everything outside of the norm that they, they are willing to accept and explore. And I think that's really good. But now we got that other section. And, and so uh, my my main question is, you know, why or when can we think we can expect for our other cultures to begin to softly put out that message, even the fact that congressional hearings, but we don't hear about that on K-104, even when they talk about the news and K-104, Steve Harvey and all this, a big show here is in Dallas, but they're not talking about this stuff. Yeah, um, a couple of things, because you said a lot of things. You know, with, for instance, with our Native brothers and sisters, a lot of this was secret. A lot of this you didn't share with the dominant culture. A lot, you know, I mean, we had generalizations around star people. We knew that they were in contact but, you know, a lot of this was supposed to be uh, not shared. That's number one. But it is being shared now. Um, number two is my concern is your concern. But there's also the other concern. And this happened today watching Senator Bur- 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 Burchett. What happens is the government is the only one who can share these narratives. They mm. had this guy who was on. Um, I have his book on my Kindle. Uh, he's Catholic. He s- accepts the party line. M- much respect for his his faith tradition. But but you know they could have had a, a Protestant minister. They didn't have to be me. But but so what what is happening now? The, the government says we're not going to say UFO anymore. We're going to say UAP. Um, the government is the one who's going to tell you if these beings exist. And they've been lying to us for 70 plus years. They're lying to us now about a lot of things, but opening up more. Uh, 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 Tim Burchett comes out and he's not a theologian, but he's giving his personal opinion uh, how it doesn't affect his his belief system. But do you see what's happened? It's all government centered. Mm. We don't want to hear from any experiences. We'll let you know what's fake news. We don't want to hear from a, it's only the military. It's only the Congress. It's only the, the military. And they, they've hijacked it. They've changed the name. And so other voices are not being heard, except for folks like you who have their podcasts or at these conferences and, and the shows that we do see. Because otherwise, this is all this is hijacked by the government. It's the government. We'll let you know if they're real. We'll let you know what we want you to know, the same people who've been lying to us. And so that's my concern, that people will start saying, unless they hear it, you know, Roderick, what is he talking about? Reverend Carter, he's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a heathen. He's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a blasphemer. And but But, oh, my government will tell me. 
They're going to tell me the truth. That concerns me going forward. But I think as long as there's shows like this, as long as people are making documentaries, people, that, that we got to keep other voices out there. Otherwise, we will be discredited or not even heard at, at all. Um, again, I go back to how to reach our communities. Um, and I'm not, you know, race, I'm sorry, this is America, race is in almost, if not everything we do, whether we want it yeah. to be or not. Yeah. And we, we didn't start this. Um, so, but if one group of people are not being heard, then the only way is for them to start telling their own stories. I met John Mack. I love John Mack. Um, uh, I, I like where he was coming from. And I love, you know, he went to South Africa and found the school children. But, you know, I love it. But you didn't have to go all the way halfway around the globe. There's stories right here in America with, with, with people that we could be telling you about. What you said was very important because we're taking other people's stories and we're, and, and we're the, now we're the experts on them. Half the people who talk about this have not even had the experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? They haven't even, yeah. and I'm not saying that it's okay if you're not an experiencer, there's something wrong with you. But I'm saying it would, it would, it would seem plausible that you can go to uh, uh, Brother Grush and you can go to someone who can say, you know what, I've seen these beings. You want me to take a lie detector? You want me to do? Why not go to the source here? These people, these folks will tell you, and and so um, so we have to tell our own stories, and that's what makes Project Black so exciting, uh, at least into in, into my mind. And we get to hear some other narratives, um, you know, and let people tell their stories in the way they need to tell them. So some healing can take place. So we're not left out in the cold uh, for lack of information. So part of that we have to do on ourselves. We have to have an open mind, you know, cause we're going against 400 years of Christianity of Africans in America, uh, uh, you know, taking that story and making it their own. Um, but, we need to just say, hold on, here's another piece to that story. And here's how it, how we know this. And so then we start opening up some hearts and minds. And there will always be people who don't want to hear it, and that's okay. We bless them and send them on their way. But otherwise, we're going to be left behind because disclosure is happening as we speak. Tim Burkett getting on that show. That's disclosure to have yeah. a Republican center, senator from Tennessee who's pushing for disclosure come out and say the extraterrestrials in the Bible. He had to get permission to say that. Absolutely. I, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, instead of and I tell my audience and I tell people around me, we don't really focus on how. Because nothing is important as why. How is not. So how he might be out there, how they trying to disseminate it. That's one thing. But why they're doing it is what we really need to explore. Why is he bringing this? Why was he willing to come forward? And this, like you said, this is a Republican. This is a politician. And yet he will sit here and say something like that. What could yeah. kill his whole, you know, everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, but then again. Could you, there, could you imagine if Obama said that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Could you yeah. imagine if, if, if President Obama said what this guy said? I, well, no, I president, no president would because they don't want to lose their job or, you know, whatever they're going to lose. If this is, you know, people can, can yeah. get ugly. But yeah. but I'm just saying, you know, put anybody else there um, and, and if they had come out and and said this, uh, you know, it would have been upheaval upheaval yeah yeah i i think it's it's one of those things to to really look at this so let's let's go back take us take us back to the moment for you when it changed um you know for you to say wait a minute were you reading something someday or were you sitting there and you was like wait a minute this is not or maybe it's some highly uh, meditations because i'm sure other pastors probably 
have had an epiphany as well. When did yours happen? Okay. When I came, when I had that experience, when I saw that great person in my room, when I came back from Mexico, December 28th, 1989, that was the game changer that moved Mm. the needle. And, And what I did was because like you, I'm a voracious reader. I went and found all the books I could on UFOs and religion and Dr. Barry Downing, my friend and colleague, he's retired now. He's up in age. Uh, He wrote a book in 1968 called The Bible and Flying Saucers. And that was like water to a man in the desert because (laughs) he wasn't an experiencer, but he was a clergy person. And it made me think, too. I said, if these people visited me in 1989 A.D. or C.E. as we say now, then they must have been here in 1989 B.C. or B.C.E. and even before. And that's what got me going. My experience, my first experience with the Greys and buying books. And then I started seeing other uh, people. Um, you know, uh, what was his name? He died under mysterious circumstances. He wrote a book. Oh, I have his book over there, but I don't have time to go get it. But anyway, um, you know, uh, v- Virginia Brazington was a, a woman, a female minister. Here in North Carolina, she wrote a book on uh, UFOs and the Bible. And so I'm seeing these clergy, C.L. Turnage. Then I met Zachariah Sitchin, had lunch with him. He talked about what was going on in the Earth Chronicle series. And those, oh, Morris K. Jessup, he died under mysterious circumstances. He wrote a book uh, about UFOs and the Bible. And so... That got me going, and no one else was talking about it, probably for the reasons I stated at the beginning of the show. And and I'm wired that way. I'm not into so much propulsion systems and back engineering. My mind doesn't work that way. I'm the same way. I'm the go ahead. I I, I dig it, and 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 you know, better minds than mine can deal with that. But I want to know how does it? What does it do to your consciousness? What does it do spiritually? And so. That's where I went. And so me being a man of color and an experiencer, I kind of had this little epiphany. And so when I wrote the books, it got my name out there. And so this whole, you know, I I had my, my regular gig. I was a hospital chaplain and I was at other churches. And then I got this gig at the church I have now, this this ministry, but it was like I had two jobs. When 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 uh, when people asked me for my bio, and I would write, and then it dawned on me, my God, you know, look at all the things you have here, and it was like another job, in the sense of, um, you know, getting the word out and writing and being invited to speak and maybe doing a TV show here and there. So it was another ministry for me. Like we've talked, like this is a ministry for you. Uh, uh, you you got your pulpit and you've got your congregation and you empower them and you're sharing information with them and you're getting them to think. And that's what ministry is. Right. I've been been trying to get them to give still a 10%, 30%, but they they don't fall for that one. But I was like, hey, listen, we try to we try to really, but anyway, it's just my humor about it. But I, you know what? I I do know that it is uh, my ministry or my mm-hmm. mission uh, because yeah. just the other day, right for this Eclipse stuff, and we'll talk about that in a little while too. Let me make sure my notes, because I want to get your perspective on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I started looking back, just as you just said, of all the accolades and the different things. And and I can only take myself back to when I saw the UFO when I was 12 years old and uh, the impact of that, not knowing how significant it was for my future and, but just interest, but I can take it all the way back to sitting in a living room with the she wolf. And I was like, look, I don't see any of us discussing this. This is a taboo subject, but then had the desire that I wanted to meet other people. And I couldn't and said, you know what, why don't you create it? Why don't you create mm-hmm. this reality of you meeting and talking to people in this space? 
and I used to just binge watch and I've told the story a few times on ancient aliens. And, you know, you, if you fall asleep, it, you know, eventually it'll just stay on the screen and she will wake up in the morning. And say, oh, you was up again watching all that. And, you know, of course, I did my husbandly duty. I make sure she went to sleep well. But the whole point, I would get back up and I'm going to go watch this stuff again. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But I didn't realize how powerful that was. And meeting people, seeing you on Ancient Aliens and not even know years later, we have a relationship, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the Nick Popes and uh, Louise Alexander, all these people who are now in my phone, uh, Linda Moten, how, you know, in my phone, I've, we communicate. And I started looking at my YouTube channel and I remember talking about a few things and, and I look back, okay, so uh, you know, I watch Ancient Aliens. Now you're featured on Ancient Aliens. I used to say, oh, man, I can't wait to meet this guy on TV when I see y'all. Now we are all friends, you know. Yeah. And one of the other profound part was just the, I was, you know, I'm speaking at the McMinnis UFO Festival, which is a big thing. 18,000 people a parade. It's and it's about the Trent photos. And I didn't realize that two years ago when I did my third YouTube video, one of the things that caught my attention was the Trent photos. And I did a three minute video and I was just talking to them yesterday on the phone. And it was like, we want to set this PowerPoint up for you, whatever. And I just went through and I said, here's another indicator. How did you know two years ago that now this photo, this, this energy that you had about this particular sighting, and now you're going to be speaking at the town that is all surrounded this sighting, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, yeah. and getting paid to do it, right? Yes. Wally, right? And I'm like, yes. okay. And that's another part of two days ago when the eclipse, when I was just writing down my intention, burning old stuff. And I realized that, dude, you, you've you been on TV, you've been on coast to coast radio. You don't brag on yourself a lot, but I start trying to tell people. And I'm like, you know what? Forget the nonsense. You go out here and you do your thing because you're getting ready to do something really big. You're going to collaborate with a lot of people and you're going to change this, this, this ultimate game. And I just started just checking people off the list, you know, like, okay, listen, this is huge. I, I, I have millions of people that we're going to help. And I see it all in my dreams all the time. And I was like, okay, so we have to get where we're going. Now I still got close people that I talk to, or we chat a little bit and people I'm hoping to come into the inner circle to, to really, uh, but I do know it's time to get it tight. Uh, and then it's time that we're about to really embark on a war in people's minds. And that is the worst ones because boy, is it going to take some work to do this? And, uh, and I don't know why I threw all that out there, but it's just me preparing to say that uh, I'm willing to accept the consequences and positive and everything mm -hmm. of my actions to say, okay, I'll go out and take some few arrows. Cause you and I talked about my career. We talked about it and, 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 and how is it going to affect things? And I'm like, you know what, let's just put this out here uh, mm -hmm. and really do some things. But um, for you, one of the questions that I have is when we talk about certain biblical passages mentioning uh, mm -hmm. And I have it here in your book, too, on page 46. And you guys got to get this book because uh, this book, uh, well, on page 47, but this book answers all the questions. It'll be the second paragraph where you also ask the question, why does Genesis refer to Nephilim's and the son of God's, which I have here. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of passages mentioned sons of God and chariots of fire. How would you interpret these passages in the light of potential extraterrestrial contact and, and how would anybody else do it now? Because it's just, it's in plain sight, but I still don't think that it's still, if someone was to preach it today, they don't want to go there. And I'm yeah. just trying to figure out how would they explain it's there. So if, if someone went to their church pastor and confronted them and said, okay, listen, in Genesis verse, uh, chapter one, verse 26. And like I said, they need to get this book. You know, you said, let's make God in our image. I mean, let's make men in our images. And then in Genesis 11, seven, uh, the Lord again refers to itself as plural. And you saying, let us confuse though, you know, let's confuse yeah, their yeah, tongues. Yeah. The and of course, right yeah. And so kind of go into that for us. Uh, Cause you got that in a book and, and I, I mean, I got all kinds, man, I wrote so many notes when I bought this thing for the first time. 
and yellow stickers, and it's still there. But I got you here as the reference, so I can just ask the question. But well, you know what? This is the thing. Elohim is the oldest Hebrew word. And it's... It, it Hang on for a minute. Uh, okay. Let me put the name. The name of the, they're asking in chat. The name of the book is Alien Scriptures. Uh, I'll put an image on the screen here so y'all can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, yes. and Alien Scriptures, Extraterrestrials in the Holy Bible. Yeah, there, and you can get both of them on Amazon. We're going to talk about this new book at the end called Enlightenment. But right there, the purple one that y'all see on the screen is Alien Scriptures, um, Extraterrestrials in the Bible. So my moderators, anybody, if y'all can put that in the chat uh, for people. There is a link in the description of the video right now to get the book on Amazon. So if y'all want, y'all can just look down it right now, click it. It'll take you over to get the book. So. I've already put that in the Thank description you. of the video, but yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, so so Elohim is a it's a plural masculine plural word. It is a mm -hmm. Hebrew word, and so when you read in Genesis six, where the gods plural it has singular, God says or the Lord says, but anywhere you see that in the Bible, just put Elohim it will make more sense. So the Elohim said, the God said, let us make man in our image. So obviously he's sitting around, or I'm using the pronoun he, but the gods are sitting around discussing their creation. Couple of things. The Genesis story is a retelling of the Mesopotamian story about the gods, the Mesopotamian, Babylonian, Akkadian, Sumerian stories. The difference is that the Hebrew tries to bring it all together for one God. The other texts, the Enuma Elish, um, the Epic of Gilgamesh, they are from Mesopotamia, and they're talking about these beings who come down from the sky with these machines and they're fighting and they're warlike with one another. Genesis is a retelling of that story. That's what you have to know. You also have to know that the Bibles that they sell to the general public are different than the Bibles that they have for, Sumer for, for students and scholars. The King James is the worst translation you can have because it makes all the it makes Jesus and Moses it makes them sound like Shakespearean actors. The prose is beautiful, the sentence structure is beautiful, but they don't have the correct translations. If you can get a good Aramaic Bible, the New Jerusalem Bible, a Bible that translates Greek and Hebrew, those are the Bibles you want to look at, the new Revised Standard Version. And if you email me, we can talk about that. So now a lot of Christians will say, well, Reverend Carter, that's not true what you're saying, because he's talking about the, the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what, that's what the plural means. But that's not true, because first of all, the Hebrews don't believe in a Trinity. So why would they put that in there? And second of all, the concept of the Trinity does not come until uh, 300 years after the birth of Je after Jesus's death. So now we're looking at now we're looking at that we're opening up our minds now and we're saying, well, wait a minute, who exactly are these people? Yeah. If you you know if you go to let me make sure I'm giving it to you. If you go to Deuteronomy 32.8, you now in most translations, translations it'll be the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Um, but 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 again, that's the translation. But if you look at the Hebrew, and you don't have to know Hebrew to do this, it's a council. You'll see that Yahweh is given the land. In Deuteronomy 32, 8, the earth is being divided up and Yahweh is given Jacob and his descendants. So he's given, now he didn't get all the Israelites. 
he got a certain lineage, the lineage of Jacob, because they were fighting, the Moabites were fighting the Hittites who were fighting, you know, because there were different tribes. But now, so if you look at it and you read it that way, that that Yah so Yahweh is not the Almighty God. Yahweh is a lesser deity. Maybe he's a commander. Uh, he because he's very warlike. But he's given. You're getting this. You're getting this. The sons of God. We're going to divvy up this land. We would call that an invasion today. <laughs> we, would, okay. that, we would call that an invasion, because remember you have in the Mahabharata. And you have it in your Upanishad, so we're going to go to India for a minute. They're talking about these beings flying around in Vimanas that are flying machines. And they're fighting with each other. And they have some humans fighting with them against us. We would call that an invasion. If you go to the Pope of Wu in Mesoamerica and the Mayans, they're talking about Quetzalcoatl. And they're talking about these other deities, these other serpent deities who look like reptilians. So here you have India. Uh, you can go to Africa. Uh, and, and they're talking about these beings who come down from the sky. So we got India. We got Africa. You go to the Vikings. They're talking. About, you go to the Greeks. They're talking about the Titans, these big giants. They call them the Nephilim in Hebrew. In Greek, they're calling them the Titans. You go to Mesoamerica, the Mayans, the Aztecs. They're talking about these beings. You go to the Hopi. They're talking about these star beings who came down and helped them. That's an invasion, ladies and gentlemen. That is called an invasion. We would call that an invasion today. And we have these different groups of, of extraterrestrials fighting over the resources and what they're going to do with human beings. When you go to Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. Zachariah Sitchin says that the, 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 the word for tower is Shem. He says it means rocket ship. But let's say it doesn't. Let's just say it's a big high-rise building. So they're building a high-rise building, but they're trying to go to the gods. So what does the Lord say? The Elohim, remember? Because mm -hmm. the original is Elohim. They say, look at them. Look what they're doing. If we don't stop them, there'll be nothing they can't do. Us they as humans. Do. You're talking about humans. Yes. So, yeah. so we got technology. We can build a tower. I think it was a ship. You can read it and think what you want. But so, uh, uh, um, so we got the technology. We want to be like the gods. So what happens? Yahweh says, we need to go down there and break this up. So what does he do? He makes it so we can't communicate with each other. The Tower of Babel, right? He makes us speak different languages. Because we're their creation, but they only wanted us, some of them only wanted us to work for them, to mine the gold, to, to, to be a slave species. Right. That's why he why would a loving, passionate, compassionate, forgiving, <laughs> merciful God say, we got to keep look, they're getting out of hand. They're getting out of hand. So we need to go down there. And so you start looking at this like, yeah, wait a minute. How can I get on my knees to pray to somebody like this? How can I do that? You go to the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is talking to the Lord. Sometimes the Lord can be a commander of the ship. Sometimes, you know, but we know it's not a human being. And then J Jeremiah, in one chapter, it, uh, he's eating feces. He's eating feces. The, 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 the extraterrestrial says that, no, you need to eat that. So, so I, you know, and I'm not making this up. Just, just Google Jeremiah eats feces. Just Google it. So, and this is why people are leaving the churches. If you look at, um, okay, let's look at, um, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 22, 13 to 28, Micaiah, not Micah, he is a prophet. He remote views, we would call it remote viewing, but he, he, he has a vision of a heavenly council. 
okay, trying to start a false flag operation. So Yahweh has, by king, by the time of kings, Yahweh has left, but he's still meddling in Israel's foreign policy. And so he watches the gods sit around a table. I'm calling it a federation. You can call it what you want. It's a heavenly council. And they're trying to start a war. And one of beings, they don't, and if you read the wording, they call him a spirit. Mm. They don't say he's a name. He's a spirit. And they're saying, how can we start this war? And the spirit steps forward and says, I know how to do it. I will put a lying spirit into the tongue of of the mouth of this prophet. I'm I'm giving you chapter and verse now. So you're not, you know, I'm not making it up. And and you got to get a good translation of the Bible. Okay, I'll give you some more. I'm just throwing some things out there for you. Um, Well, let If you read Samuel, you read the book of Samuel, the people are upset with Samuel. They, they think he and his sons are corrupt, and they want a new king, okay? Basically, they're saying, we want a human king. So they kind of fire Yahweh. Yahweh says, okay, if that's what you want, and Yahweh backs off. And so who's the first human king? Saul. Saul's the king. He's the first human king. My question is this. If Yahweh is God, why would they fire God? Mm. Why would they fire God? It's in 1 Samuel chapter 8. The people want human rule because they they accuse Yahweh's prophet Samuel and his three sons of being co- corrupt. If well, Yahweh I mean, the, is, the people kill Jesus, so I mean it's like we ain't afraid of nothing, you know. Well, they're saying, you know, we, yeah, we don't want Yahweh anymore. But why yeah. would they fire him if he's God? Mm. If he's God, why would you fire God? And so these are the little hints. There are more. We can go through more. But but these are the these are the things that let you know this is what happened in the Old Testament. Around the sixth or seventh century before Jesus, before Christ, there was King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was a Yahwist. He his God was Yahweh. And he was upset. And you know, Yahweh's upset. Yahweh says, I'm a jealous God. I don't want you making images about these other extraterrestrials. I don't want to hear their names. Nothing. Mm. So Hezekiah tears down all the altars of Asherah, Baal, Dagon. These are just some of the names of the other extraterrestrials. He gets rid of all the high priests. He gets rid of all of their, their altars. When you get to Jeremiah, when you read Jeremiah, Jeremiah is always whine, whining and lamenting. When are you guys going to worship Yahweh? They didn't like Yahweh. Asherah. Asherah is the female deity who they say was Yahweh's consort. But they had they had altars to all these other gods. Because they love those other gods. Uh, uh, Asherah taught the people how to make beer, how to, uh, what plants were good, what plants were good for consciousness, what plants were poisonous, uh, how to till the ground, how to, how to start civilization. Josiah, after Hezekiah dies, Josiah becomes the king. And he wants to further do what his grandfather was doing. So he kills all the high priests. He wants Yahweh. He wants everyone to believe in Yahweh. So when uh, Josiah comes along, they start changing the Bible. They start changing changing the Hebrew Bible. They start changing everything. Because they want one God, one high priest. One temple in Jerusalem. And, and, and we get that today. 
We get that today. You have the, the you know, Rome did it. You had the gods, you had the emperor, you had the pope, you had oh, the priest, and then you had us. That's where we got that pyramid from. Why did they do it? To control resources. We get to tell you what's fake news. You don't want to be listening to these other gods. You better not be worshiping these other gods. This all happened. This is history. This is you can you can look this up. I learned this in seminary without the extraterrestrial thing. And so they started, they 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 rewrote to make it about one God, Yahweh. It's easier to rule. Remember, one God, one high priest. One king, that's the pyramid. One temple in Jerusalem, that's where all the money's coming to. And this has been going on since the beginning of time. There is no God the way we would talk about it in the Old Testament. The idea of God is there. But that the Old Testament is about a time when we were invaded and we were walking on this planet with other life forms and how our ancestors had to navigate that. When you get, by the time you get to Ezekiel, you know, and he, he describes what he saw, right? And Elijah goes up in the whirlwind, right? On the flying chariot, Ezekiel describes in great detail what he saw. As a matter of fact, let me share some information with you about this, about Ezekiel. And uh, here we are, here we are. Okay, Ezekiel talks about being picked up by the Ruach. The Ruach is the wind. It's that wind that ships have, which has been mistranslated, and it travels through the sky, okay? And he was in Iraq. Where he was in Mesopotamia is Iraq. He tells it what it looked like, what it was made of, how it landed. As a matter of fact, in 1974, Joseph E. Bloomrich wrote a book called The Spaceships of Ezekiel. And what he did he was a NASA engineer. What he did was he took the metrics that Ezekiel, he took them from the Bible. And he drew what Ezekiel saw. It's a spaceship. It's patented. Okay, it's patented. You can go, you can get the book, or and you can go and Google the uh, Joseph Bloomridge, J-O-S-E-F Bloomridge. Now, what he saw is called the omnidirectional wheel. Okay, those who translate Ruach as the spirit of God have a problem. How can NASA have a patent on the spirit of God? NASA has a patent on this ancient technology. It's described in great detail, but let me give you the patent number because it was obtained on February 5th, 1974. It's used by NASA to this day. The patent number is US 37899478. So if that if Ezekiel is talking about God, why does NASA have a patent on God? Ooh, that man, that that's deep. I think you know, it, and it's one of those things that I look at. To first of all, let me put some on the screen here for the audience, since this yes. is the ministry of the day. You know, if you all are getting any value today. Uh, from what you're learning today, there is a way you can support the show. This is a community driven show. I would love to, you know, take my man out for some coffee or some stuff, but you know, so there's a cash out there. You, you can do it. Make sure you support and get his books for sure though. And the link is in the description. And if you do buy it tonight, I want to give you a shout out. So make sure if you get it, uh, do it quick and put it in the chat that you did by the book and we'll shout you out. But in the meantime, the cash app is down there or you can super chat to the, to the YouTube as well. Uh, but I would love to have your support because it's all about us growing together mm -hmm. here. Uh, and that is one of the things we set out to do. Yeah. All right. It's so important. it's important, brother. 
us. So one of the things I, I would like to do, Mike, is to to really let's go back to um, as we look at all the things that you said, right? Mm-hmm. All the stuff in the stories. Uh, in fact, it was kind of there's a movie on Netflix now. It's called Three Body People or something. I forget what it is. But it's about an alien race that in 400 years are coming to Earth and they're going to destroy us because somebody sent out a message uh, and someone sent a message out to space. Someone, someone from their planet sent a message back and said, hey, you better be glad that I intercept this. I'm kind of, a, you know, I'm against what we do here. But if you send a, if you respond to this, don't respond. Others are going to hear it and they're going to come wipe you all out. The dumb uh, three body problem. Yeah. And the lady sent the message back on purpose because she wanted to and put in there. We can't defend ourselves. Come and get us. So you would think, hey, oh, that's crazy. But the alien kind of how got into the consciousness of something. But it was kind of funny because they said something that you were just speaking on, especially with the Tower, the Tower of Babel or Babel mm-hmm. and, and the split us up. You know, let's let's confuse their tongues so they can't communicate. Um, But one of the things that stood out the most that I thought was intriguing is that the alien or whatever the race that was coming in 400 years said that we need to really implement or, you know, infiltrate you all now. And and the lady was like, why y'all, y'all coming to kill us. Y'all, y'all got better technology. She says, no, the human species is really not only y'all are lethal, she said, but look at your timeline. You were able to do this in 200 years and you was able to cre- now create nuclear bombs and whatever. She said, really, that your race is feared because you all are growing so fast and the technology is so fast that we need to come and destroy you now because you're going to potentially be the power. And it, and it makes a lot of sense because even though it's a movie, but usually they send those messages that even in the Bible, even in all of the flood, let's get rid of these humans. It's like they constantly, like you said, invasions. Oh, well, we can't get rid of them. They're like roaches. So let's infiltrate their minds or let's somehow divide them up and let them kill each other off. And then we do it in all these sub levels, you know, within our communities. It's, it's like there's a big thing going, which makes us as people should think about the power that we possess, the power that we have within and in how we was probably intelligently made. Now, having threw all that out there like that, then it comes back to the most simplest form is let's give them some type of doctrine and religion to control them. And I'm like, who figured that out? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 other the other side of that equation as we were talking about at the top of the show was that but there are there was a group there is a group of of these beings who want to see how project earth evolves mm-hmm. uh, you know those are the people who who saved daniel uh those are the people when he was in the lions den those are the people who come to uh you know to to Peter in Acts uh, and get him out of prison. Those are the people who comfort Paul when he's on the ship on his way to Rome to uh, to talk to Caesar. There, there, there's those who came to Jesus's mother. So there's, and it goes back to the Mesopotamian text with Anki and Elio. Uh, uh, Anki uh, and Elio, one brother wants us to remain uh, um, underdeveloped and one brother says, no, let's see what, where this experiment is going to go. The thing with the technology is that some of that technology we got from them. Mm. But, we don't, but we don't, you know, the Book of Enoch goes into that in great detail. But we don't have the wisdom to go with it. So it's not the technology so much that is that will be our downfall is it's that our consciousness is not there in order to use it for good. We use it for greed. We use it for war. We use it for, uh, you know, to, to, to oppress. That's, that's the thing. 
Um, and so when we talked earlier about, you know, the hardware part of the equation and you and I were talking about, I'm more into the religious part, the spiritual part. That's what I think is important because we yeah. need to change our consciousness. Yeah. And this yeah. is what Jesus Jesus comes to talk about that, obviously, 500 years before him, uh, uh, Agodama, the Buddha, comes along. But, but, but if we keep it in, in Western culture, if we look at this Bible, and there are beautiful stories in there, and there are life lessons in there. I'm not saying toss it out like it's, you know, but what I am saying is that a lot of the problems that we have today are because we learned from uh, uh, some beings who were very warlike. We learned from uh, Yahweh, who was was a war. He was a warrior god. He was a warrior god. And when he got the land in Deuteronomy thirty two eight and thirty two nine, he only got that little sliver of what we call today the Middle East. But when you got land, when they divvied up the land, you got, not only did you get the land, you got the people on it. But that's all they got. And that's mm. why they're constantly at war with the Canaanites. You know, they go into the land of Canaan and Yahweh says, I'm going to give you that land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. But how can you give somebody land when there are people already living on it? Yeah, yeah. That's that's insane. We saw that here with Native Americans. And so th they go into that land and they Yahweh wants scorched earth. He's killing men, women, children. The reason why he gets rid of Saul is because Saul, he has Saul to wipe out everything. Cattle, sheep, babies, children, men. And Saul didn't do it. What kind of God would tell you to do that? And so Samuel comes along and says that Yahweh doesn't want you anymore because you are not obedient. And so we've been taught to keep paying, praying, and obeying. And people who deviate from that are not, it's hard to rule them. And so there's some of these beings who just want our resources. They want what the earth has, the gold. Or, or, or we need soldiers to fight because they're they're always fighting among themselves. Yeah, what, yeah, whether, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, and and they get drunk. Okay, they make love, they make war, they fight among themselves. Does this sound like a god to you? Yahweh's fighting everybody. He's fighting everybody. That's not a god. That's something else. Hmm. I I think it's it's. So if we tie it back into all of these different extraterrestrial species, mm -hmm. then even though our blueprint is the same, white people, green people, mm -hmm. bird, birds got two eyes and a nose, rabbits mm -hmm. got two eyes and a nose, a cow got a nose and two eyes and the ears. Somehow this format seems to be a working format. Yes. Um, even yes. a fish got two eyes and a mouth and a nose, you know, so is it one creator of this you think, or it's even though we talk about earth being this project planet, um, or is it where, you know, it, it's like us, like a car or all cars have the same blueprint, four tires and an engine. It's a great it's, question. It's a great you, question. You get what I'm saying? What do yeah, we go yeah. with that? Uh, 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 you know, Francis Crick, who won the Nobel Prize, I forget when, he, he believed in something called panspermia. And his theory was that there is a blueprint, that's the word you used, mm -hmm. um, that, that with, 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 with single-celled organisms, or, 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 and I'm trying to explain it, but he said, if you take this blueprint, this template, and you and you plant it on different planets that have water it explains how we the anthropomorphic blueprint two arms two legs that kind of thing it's called uh, 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 panspermia francis crick c r i c k because he was the one who said that 
um, that uh, extraterrestrial life came here from another planet. Life came here from another planet. That if it's, if you if you put this template with water, this is what you get. That's why a lot of the extraterrestrial beings have what we have. They're anthropomorphic. They have two arms. They have two legs. They have two feet. They may have more digits on their toes and what have you, but it explains that. It explains how some of these angels, or they were, they were called angels, can come in Genesis 6 and mate with earth women and cause these hybrid babies and these giants. It explains that somehow we can mate with them. Mm. So there is what you say, this template. He calls it panspermia, and he says there's a blueprint, and if you go to a planet and, and mix it with, with a planet that has water, you will get something that looks like us. Mm. Yes, okay. Francis, Francis Crick. Um, and so here we have, and this, again, this is what gets people a little antsy because they're saying, so what are you saying, Michael? that we are created by extraterrestrials. And I'm saying, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what the Mesopotamian texts say. That's what um, the uh, Popul, the Mayan Popul Vuh says we were made in a laboratory. Um, the Garden of Eden was not some idyllic garden. It was most likely a laboratory. What's interesting is that Plato, Plato, who lived 2,500 years before Jesus, talked about this. He was talking about what, what, what quantum physics is talking about today. But Plato said that every 5,000 years, there is a cataclysm on the earth. Yeah. And that we get a reboot. Now, sometimes it's a flood. It could be a comet hitting us. And he got this from a... Um, a, a, a Greek person who got it from an Egyptian priest who got it from a priest from Atlantis. Hmm. Plato believed in reincarnation. Plato also believed that there was a consciousness. It, he believed in God. He also believed in reincarnation. But he said that we live in a, what we would call a fractalized universe, that there is a source. He uses he talked about what Einstein talked about centuries later, that there comes a point where there, where time begins. That's what okay. Einstein was saying, that there comes a point where time begins. And that's the point of where Plato talks about, he calls it the source, and that we are all individual expressions of the source. And we live in a fractalized universe. So we leave the source. And we individualize. There's Roderick. There's Michael. There's Mark. There's Jane. There's Susan. And so the source is experiencing life through us. And then when we finish, we go back to that source. Plato said this 2,500 years ago. Quantum physics is just, just getting this. But he said that the gods come after this cataclysm and we, we kind of get a reboot. We kind of get smarter than we were before. Now, when you look in Genesis, the story of Genesis, the earth is null and void. What do you know? What do you notice about that? The earth is already there. The earth is already there. And so, you know, and what are we, what are we told? We're told that the land is the dry land is being separated, right? That's called terraforming. You're, you're yeah. separating the salt water from the ocean water, you're separating the dry land from that to me makes me think that maybe there was a cataclysm that happened and they were separating the dry land. In other words, something had already happened. There have been many cataclysms that have happened on the planet. It's not that just that great deluge that, that all cultures talk about. It's a memory that all human beings talk about. Plato says this happens every five. We could be living in a time now where it could be. You we know, could I be would living. just get ready to ask you that yeah. question. We because could be living with all these earthquakes and, and, and earthquakes. You know, yeah. and, and, and I was thinking about that because I was like, you know what? You know, and we'll get into the eclipse right now next too yeah. before we open up for some questions. Um, 
So I'm thinking about it. If you go back, you see all these stories and you see all of these floods and pyramids and missing uh, cities and, and, and everything else. And my question would be, although we go back and we see the primitive state of those, it, we, even though the pyramids had some technology, but compared to what we see today, it is not the same. It, it's no. just not the same. So are we at a time where a species, as a species, do we now have the technology to bypass an extension, uh, you know, level event, you know, because now we can get off the planet if it's going to be here. You, you, you are we working toward getting off the planet? Uh, so therefore, but then we want to go back to our souls being trapped here. It's just so many of this paradigm. But my again, my question is, are we now, although we could be presented with another uh, platitism, but. Are we now better suited for survival than we were back then? I don't think we are. I, I don't I don't think we are. I think that we have because we don't have the consciousness to use it. Even, you know, maybe Elon Musk and Bezos and some of those folk can get on a ship and get out of here. I think that's what we're moving towards. But no, I think we could have an extinction level event and we would be wiped out. There would obviously be some survivors, as we saw with Atlantis and, uh -huh. you know, in Lemuria and those those places that actually existed. Um, but we could be living in those times. Uh, uh, and knowing that if you look at Gebeki Tepe and, uh, you know, all the archaeological sites, we're seeing that we've been very, very advanced for a very, very, very long time. You know, mm. we will not be the first civilization that that, you know, one day people will be looking for us underwater or under, you know, what we've created today. And, and Plato says this is natural. This is what this is what happens when when uh, experiencers, when they get in conversations or what they can remember, they're told about these other civilizations. They're told not all, but they're told about um what we we're just getting what some of the ancients knew that you could heal by sound. Yes. And you could heal with energy. You could heal with music. You could we're just getting that. But our ancestors knew that. And you, the question becomes, where were they getting the information? The Dogon tribe, you know, talking about the planet Sirius. They knew about the planet Sirius before the dominant culture did. Where were they getting that information from? Where were they getting it from? Where were the Hopi getting this information from? We know they're talking about star people. They talked about the ant people. They talked about pink people who lived underground. The Book of Enoch talked about the sharing of, of uh, technology uh, that, that they gave us. Even, I mean, there was probably some type of prime directive where you weren't supposed to fraternize. But what we're hearing from every, every narrative of every culture, Asian, Nordic, uh, uh, Aboriginal, that beings, they all tell the same story about, about a cataclysm that happened and about these beings that came down and helped jumpstart civilization. Yes, there were some who wanted to keep us ignorant, but there were also those who wanted to see how, let's see where this is going to go. Let's teach them how to uh, farm the land. Let's teach them how to do sanitation. Let's teach them about city living. But also, you know, how do we get money? You know, mm. teaching us about banking, teaching about farming, you know, teaching us about economics. But when you learn about economics, it's a double-edged sword because some people will have the money, some won't. Some people will have the land, some won't. So now you're starting to get a hierarchy. Yeah. When you get the kings and queens, you get extraterrestrials were the kings and queens, right? Then they back off. Then their hybrid children are the kings and queens. So now you got these demigods. We call them hybrids. Now they're ruling. So guess what? When they decide to leave, or wherever they're going to go, they say, Michael Roderick, you've been faithful to me. You're going to be the new high priest. Roderick, you're going to be the king. 
Michael, your wife is going to be the queen. And what do you think we're going to do? We're going to rule like we saw them rule. Mm. And if you know, it, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you I, see I, it now yeah. today. I think it's kind of, it's, it's, I'm telling you, I had this huge shift of information over the last three or four days. And, and like I said, I really had to uh, understand the purpose and things that we're doing here, especially where we're heading. And all I knew was that I just wasn't working hard enough and I can work even harder. Now, since this last 24 hours, uh, I had some people call me yesterday. Um, I'm supposed to go to Atlanta in a few days or maybe next week. They actually are working with sound technology for healing. And it was like, we want you to be part of this. We want you to come down and even bring some few people within your community if you want. And I just had, I didn't want to go there because, you know, I'm, I'm still working on the, 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 the inner circle of our community. Right. Yes. <laughs> and it's, yeah. Because I'm learning a lot. I've learned so much. Uh, and some stuff is disappointing, you know, over time, but that's okay because we are humans. I got to realize that we're going to grow mm -hmm. and, and ex yeah. you can't have expectations. You can only um, see everybody from where they are. And I'm learning a lot, but you know, um, so, you know, I'm a little against the, not against, but I'm a little perturbed on this overall love thing that everybody's talking about, you know, and it's just kind of weird now, but having said that where I was going to go, that's when I start coming up with, uh, and I mean, talk to you about it. I was coming up with what I call operation thrive. So I started looking back, and I start asking, how can I put a movement together? Because when I was talking about people being prepared with bug out bags and all that, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. We're, we can't, we're not prepared because we can't financially afford this stuff, right? People can't put a shield around themselves. And then we start looking at their beating us up with health. I'm, I'm right there. I'm, I have been targeted for health. You know, I'm eating the stuff I'm not supposed to eat. They can bump my message off in time if I continue to allow them to uh, infiltrate my body with all of this mess. And so, you know, I'm in the headspace now to really make sure that, you know, you, 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 you leave your mark and you do this. And so and we talked about it, you know, and I said, well, go ahead and put it out there. You you want to get yourself you want to lose this weight. You're either going to be laughed at six months from now, or are you going to be able to have this story? I don't think a lot of people want to go the route that I'm going and say this on TV and thousands of people. And I've been saying it, but now it's like, okay, you're going to do this thing uh, and raise your value, not only as a person, but in this community of what you do, because you're already set there. And I got so much stuff happening. You know, some things that anyone else doesn't know, but you know, uh, and, and, and I'm only telling this story because I, I was doing this earlier and you, I, you haven't heard about it, but I'll put it up on screen right quick. Um, of course, um, it was called um, Operation Thrive. And I really believe now that our health uh, is the weapon, it is, is our ultimate weapon. And then wealth is the shield to protect ourselves. Now, I've been partnering with several different companies to provide health products uh, as well as everything else, because I'm like, okay, if people don't, if we don't get people to kind of support things, then I can get them to buy stuff, or maybe I can get 20 or 30 people and we go spread the word of health is, is the, is the weapon. It's not, people say health is the wealth. Money is wealth for real, but health is that, that is the weapon that we're going to get back. And, and I even wrote an acronym for thrive. It was like troop seekers harness the revelation and ignite victory over the elites. I'm like, man, I'm going to hit them serious. Like, bam, you know? And, um, so far I got a few people that contact it. It is going to be us getting involved in a place where we can make additional income doing what we do. But I'm like, you know what, just put this system together, put this team of people. In. And like I said, I got people out of Atlanta. Hey, uh, so I'm gonna go down there uh, to to visit and and for a few days to uh, see this sound healing technology that they want to put out there. Even I think I told you, but I'll tell everybody right here in this box. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a detail, but this is the first ever. Let me turn that around right there for now. UFO detector. Okay, 
and it operates off the magnetic field, the energy that UFOs give off. And this, you're going to be able to sit down on your desk or near the window or outside on a car. And when a UFO comes back, they do give off a certain frequency. This thing is designed to pick it up, to illuminate, to let you know. So some people say they come over to their house all the time. They've been visited. They're going to know. Uh, and But it's also going to hook up with the Phenon app that we've been working with to where if it was in uh, Atlanta, it picks up. And then I'm in Texas, and we know it's going in a certain direction we all can sense this thing and track it, you know? So technology is there. Uh, and so we're going to be pushing this, uh, pretty soon for people to, to get involved. So I'm going to start testing it when I get out on the streets and, and, and do all that. But the whole point now I realize is that we have to financially put ourselves back. Uh, we have to do that. And, and, you know, I just say, okay, Roderick, just use your platform. But then how do you, lead by example. If you want to lead, I don't want to be the leader. I just want to be the voice and help everybody else illuminate their voices. But I'm going to start with me um, and with the transformation and the power that we get from recalibrating our finances, because I'm going to put it in production. I'm going to put my money in royalties and uh, and create these different things. I'm connected with people all over from from inside of cryptos and all that. I'm like, wait a minute, just harness all of this stuff and get your inner circles together and outer circles to become. And I say this as a witness, there's people who I talk to daily, but you know, they don't follow the path of, of some things. And, and I get it because they know that I'm building the struggle side of it, but that's over with now, right? Now it's time uh, to show exactly the power of where we at and what we can do. And and I'm just, uh, and I love it. And I thank you, number one, for being part of it. You and I, we talk about it. We're going to do our first Project Black webinars where we're going to teach some real stuff. People could pay to be a part of it and, and hear you and uh, Bishop Darrell. Uh, and then I got Erwin. I got a lot of other people, Samuel Chung. I mean, it's just so many people, Paul Wallace. Everybody's going to be a part of what we're going to be doing. And yeah, we're going to monetize the message. But how we have to because we we have to advertise. We got to put stuff out there, uh, and pretty much. So uh, with that being said, anybody get his book already? Uh, put it in the chat so I can give you a shout out. And then let me give a shout out to um, let's see, we have Barbara for uh, her support, and then we have um, uh, let's see who Nicola uh, as well. So thank y'all for supporting. Without you. You know, we do what we do and, and just as anything else. And this is a community supported channel. Yes. So with that being said, Michael, we got time for some questions. Um, yes. All right. And so I'll give you all uh, if y'all got some specific questions that you want to ask him uh, and pretty much. Um, and if you want to put a question, I'll choose them randomly. If I miss you because they're going up, just charge it. But if you want to be highlighted. With your question, you cash out that question, God darn it. I will guarantee you, you are heard. Or you can super chat it too, either which way. I mean, I'm sorry, Mike. I have to roll them like that. You know, they I don't I, I don't think they understand how powerful their support is in this landscape of influencing. You know, it is, it is. Uh, yeah. 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 We have uh this Sunday we have our fundraiser and uh it's real, you know. You just you 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 need money to to have your goals, and you 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 know you need to get. If you're going to have goals for the year, and you're talking about some of those things, you they're not going to happen unless you have some resources behind it. I got to do the same thing this Sunday uh, to talk them to rev them up. That um, you got you got to put some money behind it, and good things will happen. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. So let me look and see what questions that we have. Uh, and if I can see some in particular, uh, someone's asking, are you familiar with Diana Pacalas or whatever? Pacalas? I don't know. Maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm going to put it on the screen. She has, yeah. She's an author. Uh, she's, I, I get, I think she was up at Harvard or she graduated from Harvard. She has a new book out. I am from, I read her first book. I am mm -hmm. familiar with her work. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know why they asked the question, but they just wanted to know. Uh, uh, can you talk more often? Someone says we like you being here. Of course. I answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I think the I think the young lady probably want to know what I thought of it, um, and and I'm I'm sorry, my mind is going, yeah yeah. It's like it's like so asking someone, do you have a cigarette? And they look and they go, yeah yeah. yeah so I, yeah, I, I went, yeah yeah. No, she was asking what I thought of it. I'm just kind of spacing out. You know I, I I you know we first of all we need more women's voices. I don't agree. You know I I agree with about ninety percent of what she's saying. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't differentiate between UFOs being a new religion, only because that's where our religions came from. Mm. So, so I don't. They're not a new religion. I, I think we have to. The, the, the good news is that there were teachers who came along and said, you know, these are not, these are not gods. Uh, uh, they may be godlike because of the technology. Uh, but but the, the, whatever God is in, within you, I don't even like to use the word so much because of all the baggage, but words are all we have. Um, so I know when she goes into that and, you know, she's doing a lot of work that others had done before, as I do. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think that um, when it comes to the religious aspect, we have to remember that this is not new that our, our ancestors were telling us we were invaded and some of these beings helped us out and some of us gave some of them gave us grief mm. and that you got to know that behind all behind civilization there's there's the story that we're told but behind that there is an extraterrestrial overlay to everything that happens on this planet. I truly believe that. I did not always believe it, but I believe that. Uh, there was another question about the coming of the sixth root. root. Have you heard anything about that? The sixth root? No. Yeah. Okay, maybe mm -hmm. they can give a little more explanation. So yeah. it says you know anything about the sixth, sixth as in the number six, T-H. Yeah. R O O T coming. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, yeah, so uh, someone that says uh, about the grays. Do you have? Can you go a little more deeper into that of your experience or something? Yeah, that they, they were the first. Uh, they were the first. Oh, she says six root race R A C E. No, I'm it. not. I'm not familiar with them. Oh, okay, let me go ahead. Yeah. No, the Greys were the first uh, people that I first started seeing. I've seen a number of races. I've even, I've even had a healing uh, from a Nordic person of a blood clot. But, those, but and you know, there's so many different species of Greys. And then you got some people who say that they're, they're, they're AI mm -hmm. they're because they're emotionless. And they're, but, but some of them are tall, some of them are short. Uh, some of them are gray. Some of them are light gray. Some of them have huge craniums. Some of them have craniums like mine. So I think all of those things can possibly be true. What I try to keep in mind is whether we're telling, uh, talking about reptilians or grays or any star people, because people say, well, what do they want and why are they here and what are their intentions? But you have to say, well, who are you talking about? Are you talking about the Nordics? Are you talking about praying mantis? Are you talking because they, they, it's not like this hive mind. Some of them are are here for scientific reasons. Some of them again are here for our resources. Some of them have always been here. Some of them want to see. Oh, are they going to blow themselves up? Maybe we need to help them out a little bit here. Um, so I try not to lump them all together because just like they're different races on planet Earth. They're different races with different agendas. I'm not saying that they all want to sing Kumbaya. I know there's some people who say, oh, well, they all love us. I don't know if that's true. Oh, um, I don't believe that. I, I don't know if that's true, but there are some here who have different agendas. Some of those agendas include us, and some of them probably don't, uh, or they're not here for our growth. I hope that answers your question a little bit. Yeah. So another part, um, I got some couple of questions, and one in particular is the reptilian race. And mm -hmm. 
But it all seems to, out of all the stories that we hear, it's almost like they are the most influential. They're the ones that are here or shape shifting or part of our government or living in underground cities and mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Or maybe they're out in Antarctica. From your opinion, why is that? Why is the Greys the most prompt? Not Greys. Greys the are the most story, but the reptilians yeah. are the most overlord of everything and seems to be. Like they're laughing, like man, they just missing a point. We control all of this stuff. Well, you know, I think because in the earliest writings that we get, whether they're from Sumer or from um, the Hebrew scriptures, they're they're the ones that are described in the Mayan Popol Vuh. They talk about the serpent people that they look like they look like um, they look like reptiles. You see mm. them in um, in um, in the literature with, when we're talking about in China and Asia. I mean, for them, you know, they, they're called dragons, some of them, right? And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when you go back to the oldest narratives, those are the people that are mentioned. I know Paul Wallace talks about he thinks Yahweh is a, rept is a reptilian. I haven't found that. I haven't found that he isn't, but um, he, he's found evidence because he says there's some verses where, uh, Moses, or they talk about his snout and and what have you. But there there are some clues in there now that I think about it, and I think that's why. But you know, but we know that they're the other races. We know the Greys are there. We know that people have been on ships and said, "Well, I was I was on a table and there was a Gray standing next to me, and there was a Nordic person standing over here." Um, you know, there are people who talk about the praying mantis beings, and I've seen one of those. So we do know that the universe is teeming with life, but I think a lot of the narratives talk about or describe these beings as being, uh, certainly the Mayan Popo Vu does, uh, being reptilian-like in nature, especially in the Mesopotamian text. And even in uh, the Book of Jubilees, the Watchers are described as being very reptilian-like. And of course, when you look at the... Uh, the the, uh, the Genesis story, when they talk about the serpent, um, they were probably talking about a being who's reptilian. Hmm. Um, there was another question about describing a trilogy to the young, but I think we discussed that early on a while ago. So um, they can probably go back in the video and look at that. Um, it was described a trilogy to Young or his congregation in general. Yeah, you talked about that. It's actually in the book right here, too, page 47. Yeah. So make oh, sure y'all get the book. Oh, the trilogy. The trilogy. No, yeah. trilogy. She said trilogy, like three, T-R-I-L-O-G-Y. Let yeah. me put it up here. Yeah. Yeah, we, talk, we talked about the trinity. Maybe, uh, maybe that's what she was talking Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She said trilogy. So I'm assuming that's the same thing. Well, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, we yeah, talked well, about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we talked about it again. Just, just the, the truncated version is this: a lot of people look at Genesis six and they go, "Michael, you may say it's plural, and it is plural. It's Elohim. Mm -hmm. It's plural. I'm not making it up." And uh, when some people say, "Let us make man in our image," that God, which is trans, should be translated Elohim, is talking about when He says, "Our Father, Son, Holy Spirit," but I'm saying that's not true because this is a Hebrew text. Hebrews don't believe, Jewish people don't believe in a trinity. That's number one. The second problem is the, con the Christian concept of the trinity did not come into existence until the 300s after Jesus. So you're talking mm. centuries gotcha. down the road. Yeah. Oh, now, now they said they meant trinity. Yeah, y'all got to stop cheating, too. Some of them cheating. They're texting me personally to get it hopping in front of some of these people here. So y'all stop cheating, okay? Just put it in the <laughs> chat. Text me on the other side of the conversation because this is when we talk personally in chat and all of that, but they're using it to get jump ahead. But that's okay. That's okay. I would do the same thing. Since I know his number. Let me text him and get his attention. So yes. I, I will say... Let's talk about this eclipse real quick, too. Yeah. Uh, and give me oh, your personal oh. side of this and give me some some break it down from the spiritual side that you think the conspiracy side of it and then your opinion. 
Well, you know, it's very interesting because we've had these things for thousands of years. Our ancestors, you know, thought they were powerful, really didn't know what to do with them, but thought that, you know, obviously it was about the gods. And, mm-hmm. and they had to depend on that because you had to depend on nature and, and, and that kind of thing. So it kind of predates religion. I know that, you know, most of these things are about new beginnings. And in, in astrology, if a person is born during an eclipse, or within six months of that eclipse, before or after, they usually have a very faded year. And I don't mean necessarily faded in a negative way, but there's an important year. If you were born within six months of this, before this eclipse, or six months after, astrology can has a lot to say about that. Obviously, we saw a lot of Orthodox Christians talking about this was the rapture and that this was um, the end of the world. Obviously, a lot of end time stories talk about, and Jesus talks about in Matthew, there'll be signs in the heavens, there'll be earthquakes, there in divers places, I think is the phrase that's translated there. There'll be signs in the sun and the moon, there'll be eclipses. And so it lends itself to this kind of apocalyptic uh, scenario. Um, uh, the senator from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, I, I saw something with Denzel Washington even saying that God is warning us we need to repent, we need to, to wake up to this kind of stuff. I, so you got all that. You've got all that. Personally, I, it, I I didn't see this one. It was cloudy here, but I made sure I meditated and prayed during it because it's the energy is charged in the atmosphere, and I wanted that energy. I wanted to to soak it up. Um, I think that people are more conscious of these things now. Yes, you have people ca- capitalizing on it. There were people selling tickets to someplace. In this area was like $32 and you could get together with your friends and watch the eclipse. I think that the more we become in tune, in tune with uh, the natural world, it's always a good thing. Mm. What we do with it is something else. But it, I, 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 I like the fact there were some people who were just saying, I want to go and say I was there. But they knew something, there was an experience in it. There were some people like me who said, well, what, I'm going to drop what I'm doing and I'm going to pray and meditate. I didn't do it for the whole two and a half, three hours it was here, but I did it for a while. I, I, I think that we need to pay attention to what's going on. I think there are clues if we go back and look Um that what these heightened times can do for us now. I'm not necessarily into the end of world scenario um, because every ending is a new beginning and every ending will be an ending of the world as we know it, Uh but going into uh, a different kind of world uh, because all the major religions talk about it's interesting that there's going to be some type of extinction level event. The Jews are waiting for it. The Christians are waiting for it. The Muslims are waiting for it. The the Buddhists are waiting for it. There's going to be some event where a being or beings will help us journey into a new way of living, a new consciousness, a new wave of Way, way of being, but it's after, unfortunately, something uh, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's pretty much to, uh, and for those of you who want to support the show with Cash App, which is greatly appreciated, I just pinned the link up in the chat, so it'll be sitting at the top at all times. I know a few of you was asking, but that goes back to what I was just saying, Michael. It's like, you know, extension of level event would be that everybody on the planet or the, the species on the planets will be somehow destroyed or reset, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But if we, but if we get off the planet, then we eliminate 
our own elimination. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like if we can recolonize an asteroid or Mars or or go yeah. underneath or go underneath, because obviously at some point the, the conditions above is what the problem would be. But if everybody's yes. building bunkers like they're doing today, preparing for the worst, then and we probably already know no matter how many levels of extension events we've had here on the surface, the, the aliens seem to appear to survive being underground and they, mm -hmm. they survive all of this. So is that not something we learning or we now going underground and we getting off the planet? I know. I agree. It's, it's been done before and there's always survivors from this kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so those of us who are fortunate enough, uh, I, I'm saying that in, if in an extinction level event, the people who can afford to get on a ship and get out of here are going to be those who are a little more fortunate than your average person. And the person or the people who can go underground, you know, it's, it's just not going to be everybody. It's not going to be an equal opportunity event. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm hearing what you're saying, and we know that this has happened before, uh, that people have done this. Uh, and, you know, again, the Hopi talk about several cataclysms before the ones that's coming up now. And there were people who did go underground. There were there were uh, other life forms that went underground. Obviously, when we look at Anki and Elil in the Gilgamesh epic, um, when we look at uh, Noah uh, uh, in the boat, uh, uh, when we look at the, the beings, they left. They were above the earth. So, yeah, it, 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 I think the key there is that this has happened before. Mm -hmm. This has happened before. Plato talked about it. Uh, Barossus, the, the Greek uh, high priest, talked about it. He got his information from Egyptians who survived it. Because remember, after Atlantis, some people went to Egypt or what is now Egypt, and people just went to other places. So this, but, but I think the key is, is that in the, li in the life of this planet, these cataclysms do happen. And as you say, there is a reset, but that reset seems to be when we look at the narratives from around the world, that beings from elsewhere came and helped us start again. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's that understanding. A lot of people think the great reset is going to be the Bible text where the head now is going to be the tail and the tail is going to be. I, I, I think it's just still a plan of control and that they're going to use a way to uh, minimize the, the human impact on this world, you know, because we have they have to scale the elites or whoever the big secret keepers. They got to scale it down to control. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is. Again, why? How could they do it secretly? And why are we thinking small five and six year plans? They're thinking hundred year plans. You know, they yeah. can see. Oh yeah, they're, they're thinking they're, bigger. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, they, yeah. they're looking down the line, and yeah. um, and they always have, and 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 that's why you have, you know, some of these rulers. They trace their lineage all the way back to extraterrestrial time. You know, um, yeah. these kings and queens, they can some of them say we can trace our bloodline back to these beginnings. Now, they may not mm -hmm. come out and say extraterrestrials, but that's what they're talking about. And so these elites, they keep that bloodline pure and they keep it going. Um, and so and then there's those folks and then there's the rest of us. Mm, yeah, I, I just think it's 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 the one big plan, but you know we're we're gonna work on it. We're gonna work on it from uh, you know very good ways of of that. I think that it's kind of I don't know. You know, for some reason, I just keep getting the dreams of going covert. Is somehow this message has been toying with me for weeks now. Like you got to be careful. You know, uh, it's not like the message to the world. <laughs> it's the message to the ones who hear you, right? And and it's well, kind of like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, as we said at the top of the show, you know, knowledge is knowing what to say. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is knowing when to say it. 
Absolutely. I, I and can't so, uh, you know, the, the, the yeah. way the way to re, the way to reduce risk or people sabotaging is not to say it until you're ready to say it or until it's done or yeah. until, you know, um, until you're ready to put it out there, because then nobody knows until you do it, except your yeah. close friends or what have you. But that's the thing to remember. Knowledge is knowing what to say. And we respect that because yeah. we, we, we appreciate knowledge. Wisdom is knowing when to say it. And that's probably one of the, you know, I've been told on several occasions, you know, I'm an open book or, and I just had that personality. I didn't really care at the time. But now that I start looking back on this and it's all, and, and I say it sometimes, uh, in a humor fashion, it was this this movie called I Got the Hook Up back in the day where they were selling these cell phones on the black. It, it was kind of funny. But when you think about it, so let's just say something I was giving this and they were like, man, don't share this with anybody. This is just for you. And then you end up you call somebody and you say, hey, you're my friend. I need you to know this for your protection. But then they call their friend. Because you, you're really not their friend. They really have another friend. And then everything spreads around so quickly uh, to all of a sudden the possibility of you utilizing what you know is diminished because loose lips sink ships, you know, period. Uh, but then when you look at the government protocol, they make sure you got to be read in to know anything. And it's like, do we need to operate like that within our own layers? You know, our trusted people, should they be... Uh, you know, because my main thing is, is the people with voices, people who are willing I, to 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 I, step I, out here, you know? Well, I, I think you have to. Yeah. And, you know, but you have to have what is realistic. If yeah. I, I like, for instance, in my church, I know there's some people if I want something to get spread around, I know who to go to. <laughs> OK, I know just the one I need to say. It'll be right. sky written across the sky. But I, I look at I look at like I look at the teachings of Jesus. You know, Jesus taught to the crowds in one way, and then afterwards he would teach his disciples something else, because they were the trusted. You have to meet people at their map of the world. You don't cast pearls before swine because they'll they'll eat it and then trample you underfoot. So you have to you know at to be a leader you have to get to know people you have to get to know psychology and you know I can share with this and even people you don't know I can I'm talking to you about this I have a sister who's a fundamentalist my half sister love her to death we can never talk about this so I don't bring it up it's it's, it's just that simple doesn't yeah. make her bad and I'm up here and she's down there no it's that that's just not where she is and that's okay and so you know what you can say and what you can't say. And, and you know, people can have more than one friend. But, you know, again, you know, you, you, you decide what I'm going to share. Like, I, yeah. like if I got some projects coming up, I may say something to you about it. But I may not go public with that because it's not the time and they haven't happened. Absolutely. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you got to have that kind of discernment. That way, if something happens, then you don't have to go around, oh, I'm sorry, I said this was going to happen, you know, and 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 that's just the spiritual discipline um, that you know what to say and when to say it. And 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 that's part of spiritual growth. And and we've all been there. We've been burnt. And then you just you just you just learn from it. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's it, it, yes, I, I could say I'm learning from it. Because and 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 I was gonna uh, I'll actually share with you tomorrow, but yeah, I got some images, some things that were sent to me yesterday from this eclipse stuff that just blew me away. I was mm -hmm. excited at first. I was like, oh, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna, you know, I'll probably give it to our researcher. You know, me and her is pretty tight when it comes to you know closing our lips on stuff. But you know, I was like, no, you do not, don't, don't do this because yeah. if this gets out. <laughs> this, this is going to mess with some folks these days. Uh, we already got enough things going on, but my source was good. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it came through on our, you know, our, our back end secure chats. And I was like, and it and now it gives me a headache because it's like, I, do, I don't think I wanted to know this. You know what I'm saying? Like I did want to wake up to, to the reality 
of now being pulled into some of this information. Uh, and I say this, but sometimes you want to just be the one to say, okay, you're going to not be a whistleblower, but then it's it just not, you know, and, and I, I don't get it, but I'll throw that out the window. But yeah, we'll definitely talk about that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Someone <laughs> asked to say that, do you think Jesus was a hybrid or e. Oh, no question. No question. No question. If, if, if your father is, hum- if one of your parents is human and, and, and the other one isn't, then that makes you a hybrid. There's mm-hmm. no, and, and we, and we see that Gilgamesh was a hybrid. Uh, uh, you know, Zeus had a son, uh, you know, and, and, and these, and these beings, when they made it with earth's women, they had, they had, they had children. There's no getting around that. Uh, it, it sure would, it sure makes his life a little more understandable, especially some of the miracles that, that he did. Uh, again, I don't think this takes away from him. And he called his father Abba. And he was right. This is his father. This mm-hmm. is this was his father. Joseph was his earthly father. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus was definitely, and if you read Josephus, um, oh God, he's over there. Uh, I forget what book it is. I can text it to you tomorrow. He says, yeah. he mentions Jesus. And he, he talks about um what what type of man he was. And then he has a little phrase there that says, if you can call him a man. <laughs> yeah. If you can call him a man. Not so, at the bow, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and of course, when you read the story, I mean, we know ships, uh, we know stars don't shine lights down on mangers. And right. we know that doesn't happen. And <laughs> he leaves, he goes up in a cloud. Um, you know, they, to me, that story is about uh, a God man, a God right. person, right. Um, and and so and and what and what came out of that Christianity? He didn't come here to start a new religion, but but somehow, and he was trying to tell us that the things he did we could do right. to envision ourselves differently. Um, but it's easier to follow him than to live up to his teachings. Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's first of all. Um, Bishop uh, Daryl Nichols is in the chat. He's part of Project Black, too. We're all going to actually he's going to be part of the first webinar and seminar that we do with you and him. And yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be uh, knocking some stuff out in a few weeks. So I want all of y'all to be ready. Um, where do we go from here, Michael? Where do we go? I feel that we go. We, we cultivate our inner life. Um, and, and by that, I mean our spiritual life. Some people don't like the word spiritual. I know it's used so much and um, it's like the word love. After a while, it loses its meaning. Um, but, but, you know, to go in, to find out who we are, not just who we are as far as our, you know, who, the progenitors, um, but who we are as people. What, what kind of lives do we want to live? Because it doesn't matter what's going on. Jesus lived in empire. The Roman Empire ruled the world. Just like even though we're in a crumbling empire, the United States of America rules. It's changing because it always changes. Babylon ruled at one time. Greece ruled. Rome ruled. You know, but Mm -hmm. but who do you want to be? What kind of legacy do you want to leave when you leave here? And I think that's up to each and every one of us. You know, it's the hero's journey. Who are we? Yeah, I yeah, thought I yeah. was this. I was told I was this. But now I'm realizing none of that's even true. So we peel the onion. And who are we at the end of the day? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Because that's the only thing you have control over. We yeah. don't have control over uh, extinction level events. We don't have control over disclosure. We don't. We don't have control over a lot of things. we got an election coming up this year. Some of us are going to be happy with it. Some of us are going to be unhappy with it. So, so, you know, there's a lot going on. We're going to have some more events in the sky and nature. It's going to be, I think 2024 is going to be crazy. But the thing is, through that, what, what are we going to do with our lives? I'm 67 years old in July. 
I'll be dead in 30 years. I may be dead before then. So I look at life. Really but you're coming different. back, though. We ain't talking about no reincarnation, but no you're question. coming back I'm with coming power. Back. And yes. some people may say, I may say, oh, my God, I got to go back to Earth. But 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 I'm thinking about, OK, I got a daughter in college. You know, you know, I want her to to, to, to have a good life. I want to leave some wisdom with her. I got a wife. I got, you know, I, I got my ministry. What do I want to leave behind? So when I do go, I've left something. I, I made the place a little different, a little better, I'd like to say. And so that's what I leave people with, because that's something you can. Howard Thurman, yeah. who was Dr. King's mentor, said this. I'm paraphrasing. He said that the time and the place of a person's life is the time and place of their body. But the influence of that life, the significance of that life, the legacy of that life is as powerful as we will it to be. So that's something we can do. We can make our mark. Yeah. And, and now, for I, me, I, I, the I, mark I trust is you to with serve. That. Yeah. To me, the I, mark is to serve. For me, it's to serve, to serve my fellow human beings. I chose ministry. Somebody else may choose athletics. Somebody else may choose music. You're choosing, you know, but but we can we can we can we can raise the vibration and lift and lift each other up. And w w whatever happens after that doesn't really matter. No, I'm with you on that, because I. I was reading some books a long time ago, and it was like, how can you live forever? And they talked about the bio, bio karma, um way. Number one is through books. You know, because your your generation's generation can know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, your great great grandkids can know how you thought. Could, you know, if they get a hold to the library and books or and even YouTube channels and stuff. As long as YouTube is around, these things are going to be here forever. Uh, and as you make your mark, there will be people that will come after and know what I've done and what I'm what I'm doing. My impact. Would I be remembered? You know, because I, I, I say it all the time when I leave here, you know, you know, shut it down, you know, cut the restaurants, cry, miss me, you know, miss me. I want to yeah, be yeah. missed. <laughs> you yeah, know? you yeah. will be. You will miss be. Miss me, God damn it. I, I, Let me give dude. you a quick example. I know, well, we're gonna, I'm going to sign off because okay, uh, yeah. I got to get to bed. But this is what I, I was in a restaurant about two weeks ago with someone from the church. And uh, one of the servers there goes to the church also. And she said, uh, Michael, there's a woman back. One of the cooks in the back uh, is crying when she saw you and she wants to come out. And I was like, what? Did I do something wrong? And she said, no, you were there when she had you were her chaplain when she had bypass surgery. And she hasn't seen you in about 20 years. So she came out. We hugged, we talked. That's what I mean. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to start up books. Definitely. Your kids, definitely. But that woman said, you don't know, you probably don't remember me, but you were there at this point in my life and you gave me hope. And that, that's, that's, that's part of your legacy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you, when someone can say, you know what, I was down in the dumps and Roderick shared his smile and he shared a little wisdom with me. May not have ever seen your show, but 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 that moment lifted them up and they will never forget that. Yeah. And no, I'm with you. you. That's what um, I'm talking yeah. about. I have been getting a lot of emails when I started Project Black and people saying, I wish my father was alive when you did this and 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 hundreds of emails when I went to the Conscious Awards and um, I looked up, they was taking photographs and, you know, I looked up, I had a line of people that's like way down there, like, we want to take a picture with you and people walking up. I watch your show and you just don't know the lives that you touch, right? Exactly. exactly. You have no clue, but it is a lot of inspiration and accountability that you have. And you know, sometime I'll ask people around me, maybe if it's someone I was maybe interested in 
if you're going to partner with me, do you really know the impact? Do you really know what you're going to step yourself into? Because, you know, it can, it can be this big or it can be so impactful within this internal circle. Now I'm finding myself going to the grocery store and somebody will be staring and I saw you, those people will pop in the chat. Hey, I met you at Costco or, Hey, I seen you on TV and, and, you know, and it's like, wow, you know, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and you want that. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And you, you want that, you know, and, but at the end of the day too, it makes you a little more responsible. And I don't, you know, you know, but there are some things I'm working on that's going to be gigantic. I'm just making up a word in the next six months is, you know, yeah. I'll be all over the place. And so I'm trying to prepare for that. I'm trying to prepare for the, for the negativity that's going to come along with that. Uh, but as well as embrace the responsibility of, of what's happening, and and I enjoy it, you know. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the way yeah. and the way to prepare for that, and then I really am going to go. One yeah. of those ways is to cultivate your inner life, your prayer yeah. life, your quiet time, yeah. your meditation time. You know, because as long as you got that, you can withstand any storm. Mm -hmm. But but you that that's how you put the work in. Um, Anyway, brother, it was. It's All right, always, it was, We got to talk about. Well, we'll talk about it. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, we'll but anyway, yeah, Enlightenment is his new book as well. Uh, I mean, the you want to? You got a good? You got an elevator pitch for it, right quick? Well, I can just. It's a book of sermons on justice, on um, on race, on history, on philosophy, on religion. I, I put together uh, some of the sermons that I liked. So they're not really UFO related, but I have other interests and I, I commend it to you highly. Um, and it's got wonderful reviews on Amazon. It's in paperback. It's in um, ebook and it's in uh, hardcover. And of course, my other UFO related books, just type my name in Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and all five of those books will come up. Hey, man, I really appreciate you. And I just know I'm so blessed just to have you and a lot of other people. I talk to you all, right? This is my circle, you know, yeah. and, and the yeah. impact of knowledge. And when I'm confused, I can pick up the phone, hey, tap into this, this, and this, and that. Yeah. So it's just been a blessing. All right, my brother, we'll talk soon and we will get prepared for our future webinar and yes. we're gonna lay out some things for them in the future and we'll get it all together. Much love okay. to you, brother. All right, brother. Peace. Thanks, All everybody, right, for out. tuning in. All right. So, listen, y'all, um, I'm text Daryl. I'm going to see if he want to hop on with us for a minute if he's at his computer. So, Bishop Daryl, uh, let me see if he's uh, around for a minute and could hop on with us uh, if, if he can. So, let me. All right, so y'all hang on. I'm going to send uh, Bishop Daryl a link so he can hop on with us. So that let's, let's uh, further this conversation a little deep here for a minute. Y'all hang on for a minute. Uh, yeah, I don't have I don't have my machine to uh, – now he's going to come on here. I don't have my equipment here, uh, Damon, to do a phone call, but uh, I have it for – what we're going to do here. So let me send him a link and uh, y'all yeah, hang on a second. There it is right there. There it is. There. 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 All right. All right. So we will, uh, we'll wait a moment for, uh, Okay, hang on. Okay. There we go. Y'all should be able to hear me now, right? Y'all hear me? Okay. All right, so I'm going to, uh, Daryl is going to hop in with us in just a minute. So y'all get ready to, 
talk about that. Yeah, let's do right here. There we go. All right, so I sent him an email. So y'all hang on a moment. We'll get Bishop Daryl in here with us to, to talk a little bit. But in the meantime, that was a great conversation uh, with, uh, you know, Reverend Carter and everything. And we can kind of, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, I did. Yeah. All right, so he's going to hop on with this through the phone. Y'all hang on a minute. So, yeah, y'all make sure y'all support his books. Uh, if you guys are wanting to uh, support the show with a cash out, uh, that'll be fine. I would love to get my brother, uh, you know, some coffee or something at the same time uh, for those of you already support it. So uh, we would do that in a minute. But um, Daryl just text. He's going to hop on up here on stage with us in just a moment. So if y'all want to hear a little bit from him, because, you know, he got a great story and great perspective as well so that'll be cool so y'all make sure y'all don't go anywhere uh, yep i'm talking to um some folks to uh put a few things together here in uh, for the webinar so that we're gonna do and and pretty much uh uh you know a few things here uh you know so y'all hang on a minute uh Yeah, so we we will do that in in a few moments to see um, what's going on. All right. Yeah. All right. So in the meantime, though, um, y'all make sure y'all share this video, uh, share everything to to see, um, um. You know, from there, and uh, we can kind of uh, see from there. So anyway, uh, Bishop, let's see what else we, we're going to be talking about in a little bit. But yeah, so y'all hang on a minute, and uh, we just kind of go from there, uh, and, and pretty much we can uh, do what we're going to do from there. So it's all exciting, uh, pretty much, very exciting um, to do. But I think I hope that, you know, each and one of you uh, really learn a lot, you know, just kind of understanding the, the, the embarkment or bankment that we're going to be traveling down, especially talking about, you know, uh, spiritual stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's it's really something that you have to be really careful with, you know, especially with us. But, you know, with Project Black, we now got a lineup of a lot of people uh, that we're going to do. Uh, and, you know, so we're going to do the first webinar in a couple of weeks. And so I want, and it won't be a room for a lot of people. We're just going to have it really small, but they're going to do some teachings and conversations that I think is going to be really important for us to begin the process. And then we're, then we're going to do a global approach or a kind of a, a round table approach of how can we now start getting more stories and then get more people comfortable we're coming forward. So y'all got to stop, start spreading the news, uh, letting people know uh, if they got conversations they want to have or different things that we can pretty much do this. And and so, and if you have not, you know, you can go to the website, get your hat, your, your Project Black uh, shirt uh, and a few things uh, or whatever, because we're going to be representing uh, big time. And so I just hope that y'all ready for that. Let me see. Okay. We're, uh, uh, where Daryl is for a moment and he's working on his computer uh, and see, he said, did you say I'm going to join for my phone because my computer is running. All right. So, uh, yeah. Scroll. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so let's see what we got here. Uh, let me find out and make sure, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, and just kind of go from there and, yeah. 
Y'all hang on one quick second. Uh, All right, so let me check on Daryl for a second and see what's going on before we get out of here. Let's see. Uh, let me call. You you good? Oh. Okay. Oh, but you got the, you got the email for the link though, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, you know, we'll wait for you. All right, brother. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. He's coming. Uh, oh, well. All right. So he's coming, y'all. So, uh, if y'all got some questions or something, y'all can ask and pretty much. And can somebody test test my 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 cash app? I don't know if it's working. It stopped working. There was a glitch. Uh, from you know, so somebody make sure it's still working, and uh, you can test it a little bit. Ha ha, funny funny. Uh, you know, yeah. So at all, you know. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see what the chat. Summer says, I won't be this and blah, blah, blah. Y'all want to blah, blah, blah. That's why meditation. Yes, please. Your name is not. Okay. Siobhan, is it Siobhan? Um, my email address is contact at why the big secret. Email me your cash out. And then I'll do a request to you. Yeah. So contact at whythebigsecret.com uh, is the email address and say who you are, blah, blah, blah. And uh, send me your cash app. And, or you could put it up here. Or, or, or you could just put your cash app up here. You know, you know you, the only thing somebody can do is send you money. But if you want it up here, you can put it up here and then I will. Put it in my and send you a request so that you at least know and and have the right one. So you can you can do that. But the email is is contact at whythebigsecret.com is my email address. And uh, you can do that. And some appreciate the support for testing the cash out. Yeah, I think it's it's working just a little bit, Summer, a little bit, but thank you. I, I can see I can see there's light a little bit, but I appreciate you. Much love. <laughs> Rod, how did you meet Revan? Um, I bought his book some years ago, and then I reached out to him and told him what I was up against, Damien, because I was having issues in a TV world, and I didn't have anybody to talk to about it at the time. And uh, so I called him up and told him what I was dealing with, and we became good friends ever since. So uh, it was a wonderful thing. It was a, it was really wonderful uh, from there. Look, someone talking about I tested it. I mean, you tested it? It, it. it it made a noise. It did make the dollar sign. It did go. It did. Uh, but it didn't sound normal. Like it really would sound if a few people was like testing it. But it, but I will say this potentially that it works a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh Lord, she says twenty five dollars. You know, I can I can feed my dog with that. Me and the dog, and and the homeless people. Girl, go ahead and send that twenty five bucks. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, yeah, I know it said beep. So I'm able to like beep just a little bit, right? Uh, <laughs> y'all so funny. I love y'all. Y'all are so freaking funny, all of you. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, Distance said you keep begging ain't going to work. All right. So at this point, y'all block him from the channel for good because I ain't begging for shit. 
I ask for support for what I do. In fact, you can take your ass and go somewhere else and don't watch me ever again because I don't need to pour into your life for nothing because I don't beg for shit. Thank you. Go. No, you ain't drunk. Your ass didn't. You shouldn't have been said what you said. I, I don't play that. I don't even know why. See, this is the problem that I have when you out here. You have no clue of how much work goes into providing information for your life. And you come and drain and drain and drain and drain and, and don't even give good vibes, a good energy. You know, that's why I say what I say. But I will block you. So you better get a new username. So by tomorrow, you won't even notice the channel exists again. And when I give out pertinent information, you're not going to hear it. Thank you so much. Yeah, that, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? People just do that. That's fine. But I bet that some gun pays Netflix. I bet he pays all of these other people. I bet you give for other information. Uh, the fact that I have to ask is the problem for you anyway. You know, whatever. All right. So we got Daryl here. Hang on. Hey. What's up, brother? Hey, how's it going, Roderick? Oh, man, I'm sitting here going off on somebody want to say I'm sitting here begging. You know what? If if you if you didn't come, I would have held up the middle finger. But out of respect that you hear, I'm going to send it to them consciously. Man. Yeah. All right. What's got going my on, brother? brother? Here with me, too. Your brother, where you at? You see Bob sitting here in the background? My brother's your brother. Your brother's my brother. Where you at? Come on up here. Shit. This is a family thing. Oh, all right now. <laughs> all right. So what's going on, man? I, I was letting them know we're going to be doing some Project Black stuff coming up pretty soon uh, and really hit it. But, uh, man, you had you had a great weekend. You want to share some of that, what y'all did over the weekend for the Eclipse? Well, we, oh, yeah, what we did, brother. Okay. Oh, am I still with you? You there. You there. All right. Yeah, we um, I clicked it up some some close friends, and we went to Serpent Mound in Peebles, Ohio, and mm -hmm. uh, and we we were there for basically three and a half days. And again, uh, for folks who don't know Serpent Mound, it's it's the largest serpent shaped shaped effigy in the United States, and perhaps uh, could be even in North America, as far as we know. And it's got some strange, uh, I guess, magnetic anomalies that happen there as well. Mm -hmm. and I've been going there for a number of years now, uh, participating in ceremonies with a uh, largely Native American community, but it's inclusive of all nations and all races, you know, and all our relations is our, is our motto. And we had maybe about 300 people that came specifically for the festivities and the events. We had speakers lined up and vendors and uh, ceremonies as well. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to say I, uh, the, the posse that I was with, uh, included uh, Bobby Irving, who is, uh, for those that know him, he actually goes by his formal name is Robert Irving III. Mm. And he was Miles Davis's musical composer, you know, the world famous trumpeter. And he was a uh, Miles composer for the last uh, 10 years uh, before Miles transitioned. And he's traveled globally. But not only is he a great musician, but he's also very, very uh, aware and conscious. A lot of things that we talk about in here, you know, in your program. And I had Big Fight in Geneva, who was my, he's a good friend. He's like a brother. But his uh, one distinction among several was he's probably the first um, Western person, U.S. citizen, that was actually initiated into the mysteries of the Dogon. And mm -hmm. he, a very high-level Dogon priest, opened up, at the think of time, five or six earth centers where they taught this this lost ancient comedic knowledge and spiritual traditions here to people in Los Angeles, San Diego, Chicago. And I was so influenced. I went to see those, but, uh, and we had Baba Jubal who was, he's a very, very well-known uh, here in, in the, throughout the Ohio area. Right. Our, our percussionist. And we were all, we all stayed in the same house, the same chalet and my brother and uh, Bobby Irving had brought another friend from Chicago who is a, uh, she teaches a craft uh, Noel teaches a craft, and it's what's well, a skill it's called uh, joyful yoga. And so, but even with that, and all the other celebrations, the activities, the events, and then the eclipse as well, and the ceremony that went along with it, and then being on Serpent Mound, uh, it, it was it's just phenomenal. It's just phenomenal weekend. 
and that and that just 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 the beginning. There there was all these amazing synchronicities that was happening. The energy was crazy. Uh, I right. got real grounded, you know, and even left there with some upgrades. Mm. And, and I've got to say this, you know, uh, Terry Rivera and Thomas Johnson were the two people that they organized this event. And typically, it's every equinox and every solstice because that's that was one thing that's unique about Serpent Mound is this almost uh, three well, football length field, effort. right? But the curves of the serpent aligned with the equinox and the solstices. So how did ancestors know thousands of years ago to do that? But it is mm. also, uh, I think the reported, there's about 70 places on this planet, 70 locations where we have evidence of large impact craters. Okay. And Serpent Mound is actually, and the impact crater hit an estimated, was it uh, 300 million years ago? But it's the only uh, impact crater where it actually was on a fault line. Mm. And so now you have a, the, the, and a lot of geologists from around the world come to study it because it's absolutely unique because there's no other example of this anywhere. And we know they have these strange magnetic and energetic anomalies and it moves just like the patterns. And also it's said it's on a ley line. So storm, storms tend to go around it. Battery cars go dead. Uh, my brother was even, um, he was uh, wanted to get something out of my car and he was going to drive my car and he just put the keys on the council. And I said, no, you got to put the keys in your pocket. You can't leave them in the car because there's a lot of reported cases of people who had left the keys in the car and these energetic vortexes click off and now and all of a sudden the, and the car just locks itself. Whoa. Yeah. Just the magic of Serpent Mound, but in a, in a, in a human being. And a lot of people go there like I did. And I shared the story, on, I think, on one of your shows about my first experience there. And I was by myself. That convinced me of that there's something absolutely unique about that place. And I experienced what I just called a spiritual car wash, my, my first example there. So I became a believer because I, uh, I had the experience there. And so now we have hundreds of people there for this event and activity. And, and it, was just, it was just amazing. Daryl, I, I, I have to stop you for a quick second because I am just too excited. I'm going to put something on the screen here. This is the greatness of Zulu, right? They all need, they, they watched him grow up. But little did they know, Zulu came through me from you because you have his sister and, and a couple of pups. Now your his sister got puppies. You got to show us a couple of them. Maybe some of these people might want one. Uh, just go grab one or two or something, uh, and then we'll keep talking. But see if your brother could grab a couple of those pups, and so we can show them your bullies, Zulu's sister's babies. And uh, yeah, so I want y'all to see the puppies, and he got five, four available. So if y'all want one, and y'all want to. Join me in the club of the bullies with us because we're going to do a breeding program. Y'all can get in on that right now. Yeah. So and these are the, I mean, they are fabulous and they've got a great pedigree and I'm just waiting to get my papers now, getting get them all registered. But yeah, so Daryl had his first. So he gave me the breeder that he was with. So I got my mail. He actually got a pair and which one was Zulu's sister and, uh, so I just I just had to throw that out there. I, I want people to know, uh, you know, if they want an opportunity because that bloodline is off the chart. So, oh, well, he's gonna bring the big girl first. This is my girl. Okay. This is my keeper. All right. So that's that's one of the that's Zulu's niece. Yeah. Can you see her? Yeah. Hang on. I'm gonna put it up there first. There she goes. Say hello, girl. <laughs> yeah, she's a chocolate try. She was actually the biggest out of the litter, and she's also the loudest. She likes attention. Oh man! And I think this one here is this is little Rudy. <laughs> Say hello, fellas. Say hello. Oh, yep. These are. Both the girls. These are both girls. I got two boys and three girls. All right. And, and, and you're taking deposits on puppies, right? Yep. Yes, they are. And, you know, um, 
the uh, the guy that when I got him from you know Tina and uh, Edward, and he's looked at a lot of them, but he said that you know even being being candid, uh, he said it's probably one of the better looking litters that he's seen, and you know since typically you always have you know one or two really 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 good ones out yeah, of any litter, yeah. but he said all of these really look really good. Yeah, so there you go. Y'all going to be able to uh, – y'all can hit me, uh, contact me on, on the uh, email, and I'll get you over to there. That, okay, that's – that mama? No, that's Solomon. That, that's Solomon. That's daddy playing with his pups. Oh, here comes mama. There's Isis. Solomon. And ISIS. Yeah, there they are. And of course, that's the big dog, Brother Bob. <laughs> All right, man. So, anyway, y'all could uh, contact me and then uh, I'll get y'all his information and where y'all could uh, work on getting you a pup and get it shipped or wherever y'all at. You know, like I said, uh, yeah. So, man, appreciate it. All right. Yeah, I was waiting to get the. I already got the first set of shots, and I'm gonna get another the second sh uh, set next Monday, and then I'm gonna be ready to, you know, have to pass some of these off because yeah, it, 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 it it's a lot of energy. <laughs> hey, man, that's it though. All right, so let's get into a little bit. I'm not gonna hold you long uh, because we're gonna be doing a webinar uh, in a few weeks, and they're gonna really get some good teaching from you. Uh, from there. Uh, okay, we got there. She is again. That's the one he's keeping. He's gonna keep that one. So, yeah. Her name is Trinity. Oh shit. Okay, Trinity. All right. Yeah, just like the Matrix. She's got a brother named Neo. <laughs> All right then. All right. Okay. All right. So let's get into a little bit of the spiritual side of the eclipse let's get your your opinion on did it actually give people a new energy did it take away from people or did it reset some people did it amplify did it harm some folks what are your thoughts well uh, frankly i'm going to say it's a mixed bag and it's probably the honest truth would be it was all of the above oh I think, okay I, I think if you're well number one from a spiritual standpoint and i understand you know the previous guest he went to some of the biblical foundations that we're we're told about signs and wonders that are given right, right. in the skies and then also they're kind of uh reflective of the changes that uh, we go through as we shift the energies you know there's a command okay. saying it says uh the sun never sets it is man that moves away from the light and not just natural sunlight but through the light mm -hmm. of humanity and if you right. look at the things that are going on in the cultures around us, everything from, you know, as recently as today, uh, right. Harry, the news about you know, six officers guilty of some heinous crimes, even all the way to the war front, I, I would happen to say that, you, you know, anybody would have a hard time disagreeing that the world's really kind of messed up right now. Yeah, yeah. But then again, come together like this and like say if you're near a conscious community, such as people who are gathering like at sacred sites, as, as we did in Serpent Mound and other people at Mount Shasta and places like that. Right. So you would find that for us and what we collectively experience, and even the people who are with me, you know, I mean, I drove to Detroit and picked my friends up and we drove, you know, four and a half hours there and back. And so we spent a lot of time just fellowshipping on the way there and then processing as we was coming back and then all the time in between when we're not speaking or engaging and or learning, we were back in our chalet just processing and, and just fellowshipping and just co conversating. But in our experience in our group, it was all upgrades. It, it, it wasn't mm. even just getting like getting grounded. Just the energy was, was fantastic. Uh, we received a lot of compliments on our participation in, in the events as well as what we received from other people who participated in the event. So for the people who are conscious, I think it just got gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> okay, it, okay. You know, and it's as if moving up to the eclipse is a preparatory phase 
And then when it passed, we just received it. I mean, we were blowing shofars. We were doing uh, meditations. And it's like all kinds of gifts just, just, just manifest all around. And you could just feel it. I could feel it. You know, we had to start drinking plenty of water. And we did. We went to an aquifer there. They'd get some of this water right out of the ground, out of the serpent mound to stay hydrated. But that was our collective experience. Now, there were maybe some other people there as well that we engaged with that perhaps weren't as, um, maybe not as knowledgeable or, or still confused and looking. We had okay. people that were just coming from all over the road. You know, my brother ran across three young ladies who uh, they had heard about it and they got lost. But they, they finally uh, got guided to Serpent Mound and they didn't know what they were there for. It was, it was like a scene from, uh, what's that movie? Close Encounters where this guy had mm. to go to Magic Mountain. You know, he didn't know why he was there, but he, he had to go. And we, and we run across several people like that just on a humbug. You know, uh, they, they just were were driven to be there, were like called four, to be maybe. there. But it's like there's four, maybe. Yo, know, there was four. There was four in that one particular group. And I heard stories of others. One lady that she didn't have the money, she but she was met somebody at a store nearby Serpent Mound. And she overheard this lady talking about it. And she says, I'd love to go. I'm living in my car, you know, and I need healing. I, I can use being around people like you. So the woman gave her a, a pamphlet and gifted her the $20 so she could come. And, and she did. And there was yeah. even more magical things and more coincidences that happened as a result. As a matter of fact, they were so numerous. I just coined a phrase that, you know, these are not coincidences. You know, anything that's happened as often as it has and we were experiencing I called it a divine conspiracy. Now, I, look, I tell I tell people coincidence is God's way of being anonymous. That's it, and and we and we were having them and experiencing them in spades, and the things that we were doing, participating in, it was just just it was just nothing short of marvelous and magical. You know, we got video footage that as certain things are happening, even over us, and during the eclipse. We're looking up in the sky, and then you look directly over the crowd of people as we're laying in the field, and you know. And then we have uh, hawks just starting to circle over us. You look up, and it's like, yeah, you're just kind of letting you know and acknowledging that you're here, you're there. Yeah, yeah. And then when you move, you know, I used to call them. I said they, I call them big vice cousins because it seems like whenever I'm with him, the hawks come around, <laughs> and wherever mm. you go, they, they're they're either guiding the way. Or uh, or acknowledge the presence. So, um, and it was probably the most successful event, well attended event that Terry and Tom have had. It, I just can't say enough about Serpent Mound, and I'm sure every people, you know, even here in Toledo. I mean, I left Toledo to go to Serpent Mound, which was only it had 97.5 percent coverage. I say only. There's a lot of people that had less than that, but it wasn't full coverage, as opposed to I left here in Toledo. And Toledo had. 100% coverage. And we, and we the traffic was so bad that day, you know, my plant where I work, you know, got 7,000 people that work there. Uh, they had to shut production down because, uh, you know, the, the magnitude of the event and traffic was so heavy coming into Toledo from Michigan, people just couldn't get to work. Mm. <clears throat> so we, we had to shut down production because people just couldn't get on the road and get, get, get there to work. And that's the gravity of people just coming into this part of town. But I went to Super Mound knowing that it was not that. But but Super Mound has something that Toledo doesn't have or any other city or state, and that is Serpent Mound, a place okay. sitting on an impact crater on top of a fault line with energy just oozing out of it. I didn't know what was going to happen, um, but I knew something was going to happen. And I, I would suggest that to anybody – uh, when we have another opportunity to do that, there's nothing like being on the sacred site and being in conversation and fellowship with like-minded people. And oh, for yeah. the people that came there looking for something, and they were blessed to receive something. The things that they, they came there looking for and not even knowing what they're looking for, just being around positive uh, people, wisdom teachers, and people that want to be good students, and other people came or that are just good learners and good seekers of truth. It's yeah. just nothing like it. it. It's not the same as being at 100% eclipse with a lot of people from just random energies. No, I'm with you on that. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to do something. We will probably, um, 
we're going to, we're going to do a lot of events this year or in between now and next year for the truth seekers and, um, you know, just get us more, not just the alien stuff, you know, but in the thing, I'm not going to hold you too much longer cause I'm going to go to the gym and, um, get on the, 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 do my exercise. <laughs> Well, for the benefit of a few of the listeners, I, I would be remiss if I didn't answer the second portion of your question. Go ahead. Um, which is from a cosmological or religious or even a, a spiritual standpoint, what is significant about this total eclipse? Um, I had a few people at work even uh, that was commenting because I even told them that one thing that commonly ac- accompanies a total eclipse is earthquakes, uh, flooding in some areas, as well as volcano activity. And historically, and I've been, again, I've, I've been in touch and kind of following some chronologists who just study time. So this isn't even opinion. It's like where we can find documented authors, researchers, historians who have documented this. So I just want to throw that out there that particularly any place that's on a fault line, probably for the next 30 to 40 days, anything could happen. And I had said this to some of my coworkers at work three days before the earthquake hit New York. And I wasn't trying to be prophetic, <laughs> but I just, I'm putting it out there because like some of this is not, it's not even spiritual in that sense. Right. Some of it is, is just uh, cosmology, cosmology or cosmogony playing out in these cycles. And so I'm just saying we need to be cognizant of that because as these objects are floating around uh they affect the energies on the planet and just like when you have another object coming or the sun just suspends for a few minutes what does that do to the magnetic fields of the planet and it's pulling on the magma out of the earth that produces earthquakes and, and volcanoes so that is natural but i'd say that also there are supernatural things that are happening and in my discussion with my family at separate mound you know amongst other things that I shared with them, I said, it's very, very important for you to take care of your spiritual health. And the primary means to do that is, I say, take care of your pineal gland. Uh, I say, stop using, uh, don't, and you already know, Roderick, but, but, and it's important because our spiritual orientation is the pineal gland. And that's how we stay. And we're going through a period of time where some of us, they get it. And there's going to be many people that don't get it. And you're going to miss out on a whole lot. And the yeah. ones that don't get it are the people that display those behaviors like we're hearing on the news. And those that do yeah. get it, we've got to find and evolve a better path, a better way. And we need it. the more people I have on board that we have on board for that, then the easier it's going to be for us to make that transition, which is why they're putting fluoride in, I think, the conspiracy in our drinking water. Mm. Uh, which just today, I think the EPA just came out with a study and they said now they are going to take some of those chemicals out of our drinking water uh, because it's, there's no healthy reason for them to be there. Matter of fact, right, right. Now they're unhealthy. And then also um, you can do, uh, don't brush your teeth with fluoride or fluoridated toothpaste, you know, and if the listeners did not know, and again, I'm telling you, this not because it's health or mental health, but I'm, I'm really appealing to your spiritual health and well-being. Right, uh, right. Fluoride that they use in toothpaste is the same uh fluorite that they use in rat poison. So mm. there's plenty of, there are plenty of options out there because uh, what those do is those fluorides actually, they, they cause calcium deposit on your pedial gland. And when you build that, that calcium, now you're, you're no longer a useful antenna. You're no longer a good conduit for the signals to go out, express through the earth or the energies to come in. You become blocked with your pineal gland, with all that calcium. So to the extent that you're successful in just doing those two simple things, you will find if you, if you don't have a strong connection, um, you'll see an immediate improvement. Yeah, there is a, uh, a actually, I don't think a lot of people know, but let me see if I can put this picture up first and then uh, we'll go into this right now. Um, uh, let me see if I could uh, get the photograph that I need here. And that Zulu is getting huge. Oh, that dude is off the <laughs> chart, man. He is off the chart. And uh, 
he's a good he's a good he's a cool dog he's a cool dog man i'm trying to figure out how can i download this freaking image here you know what i'm gonna do let me try this some, another way let me try this this way i'm gonna do a screenshot and then i will get into the details all right so let me bring an image up on the screen let me see if i can get it in here for people to see kind of go into what you're talking about here and i don't think a lot of people know this but we'll share it all right so what i'm going to do i want y'all to look when he was talking about toothpaste when you go to the store there's indicators right here you can look up on the two the toothpaste tubing to kind of know what is really happening and they they code these things so that people won't know but if you see a black dot that's going to be pure chemicals they have to put this on the toothpaste so look and see what you got in your bathroom the red dot is natural and and it's chemical composition the blue is natural plus medicine and the, and then the green is all natural uh in the toothpaste but they they put that on there though uh so that you would know but if you go to your closet or you go into your bathroom you go to the store they code these but they don't tell the public because they have to put that stuff on there but once again the green dot is going to be all natural the blue is natural plus some medicine in it the red is natural in chemical composition and black is just pure fucking chemicals uh, and this is out there in the public right now, but those are the, the hidden codes for the toothpaste. So y'all make sure y'all check that out so you can see. Yeah. Yeah. So, and y'all can go in there now. Somebody go in y'all, y'all bathroom right now, get your toothpaste and look on a, the tube and see if you see color dots on it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, let me put it back up. Y'all see he was trying to get it. Hang on. Uh, but yeah, there you go right there. So every toothpaste. And everybody's bathroom got one of these dots on it right now. And once again, the black dot is they're saying by law that is pure chemicals in that thing. It's going to be a tip somewhere. Red is natural chemicals plus blue is natural plus medicine and the green is all natural toothpaste. So y'all want to make sure that you uh, know this information right about now. So hey, and Roderick. While they're, mm -hmm. reading that, while they're reading that, I would point out they turn that tube over and read the back where it says, warning, it says, uh, do not swallow more than a pea-sized element. And it says, if swallowed, it doesn't say call your doctor. It doesn't mm -hmm. say go to the hospital. It says, if swallowed, it says call poison control. Mm. Right there in black and white. It's been there all this time, and most people just overlook it. So why would yeah. you take call poison control? It must be yeah, poison. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I got my brother Bob, and you never met him, Roderick. I think you may have talked to him once or twice. But yeah. I, I just maybe the benefit of having him there and the blessing was because that's his first time ever being at Serpent Mound. And and frankly, for a long time, you know, my, a lot of some of my family members thought I was little. Well, you know how the, the community treats us. We little wacko. I thought he was smoking Pacololo. Yeah. Oh, okay. But for people that never experienced Serp Serpent Mound, you know, he swung over the other way. But I just want to be in distant tell from his experience, not one, knowing what to expect, thinking, man, well, they're just a bunch of hippies running around to. And this is for people that never experienced being at a sacred site or energetic. Mm. What he experienced, what he actually observed. Like Daryl said, there's four ladies that uh, was walked around and he had his crystal that he just put into the, the what is it called? Well, I got some rain going on, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm walking. These ladies ask me, like, ah, you know, where'd you get, you know, they admired the crystal because it, it is quite large, the crystal. And they said they was trying to find the campgrounds. Long story short is we led them to the campground and they, uh, they did not even get to go inside the Serpent Mound, but they went to the the venue where Daryl and some of the other uh, people are hosting. Uh, uh, and I was sort of the ad hoc recorder, but I, I got the opportunity to see my brother who's been to a couple of 
Ku Klux Klan meetings. He's been in the military. So, yeah, I have all these sound bites of, and I've known these things about him, but it's the first time I had, as a collector, I've heard him put all his life experiences together, uh, articulated to a, you know, a large crowd. And I told my, told him afterwards, he did a great job. And I wish our older brother was there to listen to what he had to say. And, and the ears of the people that was listening was phenomenal. As yeah. the eclipse was taking place, I looked up in the sky and there was a huge, I, some people say that it was an X. It looked like a cross to me, but it was a huge white cross, uh, not, not so much a chemtrail, but a white cross in the sky as the eclipse was taking place. I just thought that was phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know what? That's a great thing, man, for you to now both of you can connect on that level. Like you said, at some point, uh, the conversation, because even with Project Black, what we're putting out is to start the conversation within the families. That is one of the things, because there's a lot of people, uh, they know their family members have intelligence, but some reason when it comes to some of these ideas, oh, we oh, they are oh, they crazy. This can't be true. Uh, but the greatest wisdom of it all is when people who at one point thought something was not true, they get enough information and they're able to evolve to now know that it's true and accepted and vice versa. Something that is they thought was true all their lives, get enough information, and figure out it wasn't true, uh, because that's the whole point of the mind and the wisdom that we we have to work ourselves to. Um, and, and lucky for me, my brother, my older brother, he's, he teaches Kemet. He's, you know, he has a YouTube channel. He got 80,000 subscribers, you know? And so it's, it's, it's pretty, it, you know, so my family, the conversation has been around. I look at things a little different cause I'm more into the alien and extraterrestrial aspect of it all. Uh, but it definitely works out. And even now, you know, I wear my mala beads, but my mala beads are, all pure crystals. These are not just wooden beads. These are, uh, you know, tiger's eye crystal quartz and then jade. And then I have a, you know, all tiger eye crystal, uh, bracelet. And so, um, and you know, it's time for a recharge, but I wear them, especially when I get to talking on here at night, because I get so much negative fucking energy throw my way shit it's like you know what i'm gonna block y'all you know what i'm saying so uh i wear them but you know so these are they was you know custom made for me by uh one of our audience and i use them when i meditate and count you know they're 108 beads which is half of 216 which then goes to uh you know 512 you know the megahertz of you know all the stuff that we do but um uh, but yeah my beads are all crystals yeah a lot of people don't understand the the importance and significance of that, but you know, even mm -hmm. my brother, he's got uh, a bead necklace here that lady, uh, grand wonderful lady, grandmother, grandmother Barbara Fladat Vitali gifted to him, mm -hmm. um, and she's a very very well respected uh, practitioner in the Druidic tradition. Her grandmother taught her a lot of sacred knowledge, passing from, yeah. from dru Druids, and she goes in these ceremonies, and her ceremonies are so sacred she won't even allow them to be filmed. You know, because just like mm. sometimes everything ain't for everybody, but I've been participated in that, um, and, and she's like a dear, dear mother to me, and and she gifted me with this, you know, and she's okay. But I'm saying these are the types of things that Western arrogance ignores. Yes, you know? yeah, I, I think it is, and but I don't usually throw it out there to the audience that that I use this for protection from them, you know, the bad ones out there, but. And no, I wasn't going to put it out in an eclipse. People thought that, but I do every now and then, uh, you know, put some sage on it and then I'll put it out in the sun, get a new recharge. And then I'll do a whole new intentions on it, you know? Um, and know. so who knew? Who knew? a lot of people didn't know. Yeah. For, so for Daryl, he, he recharged his crystal in the eye of uh, right in the serpent mound, in the eye of serpent mound. And so oh, yeah. the ladies who were, uh -uh. We shouldn't have said that. Wait, because you know you're not supposed to actually walk on the mound. They got park rangers. Oh, oh look, like, look, y'all, y'all, y'all are meant to a crime. I, well, you know what? I knew. I said I gotta have it. 
And so I took all my jewels and tools, took my shoes off, and I walked in the middle of the eye of the serpent. And I got that energy. By the time they busted me, it was too late. I got what I came for. And then these ladies <laughs> who were wandering, they were able to charge their smaller crystals onto onto the crystal that Daryl had. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then we led them to the venue where, where Daryl was uh, a speaker at, but he didn't. He played with. I think that he, he said one of his claims to fame was that he was with Robert Irving, who played with. Miles Davis. Miles Davis, whose daughter was the first person to receive the golden buzzer on America's Got Talent. And then he broke out into some Bob Marley. So he <laughs> also there there's there, he he was amongst uh some of the greatest performers. Yeah, yeah. If he was there, he, they had Bobby Irving playing music and stuff, and he advised me to come up to the mic and his daughter, who was the AGT golden buzzer winner. She's seen a crew in the background and rapping, and then I, I got a chance to come in, and somebody walked up to me afterwards, and they says, man, you just channeled Bob Marley, you know? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, here's my – look, now this is the crystal that uh, – I'll put it up on screen here, but this is the crystal that – last year, uh, Billy gave us all crystal being part of the family as well. Uh, uh, as the podcast family, but yeah, he gave everybody a pure quartz uh, crystal, so I keep it over there. But like I say, I have quartz in my mala beads, uh, quartz crystals here and here and here, and uh, but yeah, yeah. So I do feel the energy, and then like I said, when I get to want to, I'll get to rubbing them, put some intentions on them bad boys, and and uh, block some stuff out because you know I start noticing that. You know, you get you get a lot of people that um, I don't know. It, it just you know, it just kind of you know. I got a phone call. He didn't mean nothing by it, but you know, we talked and a pretty good fellow. But he just told me he said, you know, I uh, read your conscious record and you've been abducted. You've been been abducted by an alien. And I was like, well, you know, uh, you know, but you, you get it all the time. People do tap into you. You know, like I've told stories of people rubbing my beard or going different stuff. Um, and they all come back with the same thing. I'm not a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Have I done some shit? I probably was. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I would I would have stole your cookie and, 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 and honey bun at lunch in school. Probably would have if you left it out on the table. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, within the heart of hearts, you know, this is, you know, a good soul and spirit. But. And we make decisions and all that. But I just think that it is time to try to put it all together uh, to where. But, you know, my goal is to still tie it into the alien existence because it's that far fetched that a lot of people can't grab grab, although they're trying to go into the consciousness space. They just cannot take themselves to that. And so I think it's it's one of those things there. But uh, I don't know, man. I was really uh, it, it pleased me to hear the last portion of your conversation um, with your guests, because you actually entertained the, 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 the notion, the idea, or even the reality of previous civilizations that have survived catas- uh, cataclysmic events. Yeah. And I think you and I, we've kind of talked offline, but yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a vital, it's, it's got to become a vital portion of this, of this picture, this, this narrative. And it, I don't think it's either or, or, it's either, I'm going to say it's either aliens or advanced civilizations. I think it's a combination of both and more. Right. Two yeah. Dimensional, extra dimensional entities and realities and other uh, other phenomena. So I was really, really happy to hear that because I'm, I'm finding that there is more calendric data to support uh, support that whole phenomena. And it does explain a lot of these underground bases that are being built and it explains why there was had to have been an advanced technology from somewhere. For example, yeah. that built the pyramids and can do things that we can't do today. So uh, I'm really looking forward to contribute some more on that, as, as well as some of the other people that I mentioned to you uh, earlier this week that want to be, you know, considered to participate or collaborate think, or um, just bring some flavor to Black, uh, Project Black. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it, man. And uh, all right, I'm not going to hold you up, man. I won't get rid of chef stuff now. I'm going to. Say goodbye to the audience in a minute, but I appreciate you hopping on and spur of the moment. But um, 
Is there anything else people need to know or do or support for you? You can tell us right now. If not, they will see you on a webinar in a few weeks, and we're going to give them something they've never seen before. Daryl told me that you have to be careful what you ask for at Serpent Mountain. Ha. Okay. And so there were some people that I saw. Uh, I, I was a camera guy for uh, for Bobby Irving, and that, so while filming, I didn't have enough time to float around and to meet people. And so towards the end, there was people that I was telling girls like, ah, oh, you know, really wanted to meet some people, blah, blah, blah. And so had an opportunity to, to communicate with them. And then I had <clears throat> off my own cell phone, uh, I had some information that, you know, pictures of, of their families and whatnot that I wanted to make sure that they had them. Uh, as a way to capsulize this this event, so we're at the there's a a, a Waterford is that what it is a water well thank a you. water well an aquifer. Aquifer. aquifer that comes from Serpent Mound, and so some of the people that I wanted to make sure that they had pictures of the family and whatnot showed up at the aquifer. And and this and we were like miles away, getting ready to go out of town to get big by and some other people. So that was, yeah, seven people that I wish I could time time to see, and they all showed up at the well to refill to get water from this aquifer at the same time we did. And that's why I said you got to be careful, particularly when you're in this state, in this zone, in this area of coincidences, or what you ask for, because it's, it's likely to show up. Yeah. Hey, I hey, I'm with you on that. I think it's 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 that's why I always say coincidence God's way of being anonymous, but you know, we're going to do some special stuff and and uh that's where I'm in in the mindset to hit it hard, work even harder and uh and separate the the, the shaft, you know, the weed or whatever the spiritual world is, but get rid of some of these folks who they ain't, they ain't doing shit. They don't they just talking. Because I, I really think it's time for people to step on the mound and pitch the ball. And, and we got a lot of backdoor people, a lot of back stuff that could help the collective. And they know it, but they just don't, you know. And uh, But I've realized that, hey, we can't wait for them, you know. Uh, and, and so If I were to make a country, because that was actually the essence of the message that I delivered at Serpent Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Conspiracy of Silence. Oh man, see, see, I just got the spirit of it, right? I've been getting it for the last three or four days. Yeah. Something saying, dude, this is, you know, and, and I know a lot of people. And I'm like, wait a minute, but they be talking. And I'm like, oh man, come on, this this is weird, you know. But go ahead, tell us about it because it's just been been overwhelming. And now I'm just moving into this shift of power and saying, all right, they they're gonna witness what we're doing, but just put them to the side, you because this is not something that they need to be really ready for. You know, at the end of the day, and you look at the, the conditions of the world, there's no reason to be overly optimistic. I think things will change, but change is not going to yeah. roll in on wheels of inevitability. Right. And, and the basis, my fact is, is that who was there to help the Native Americans when we were slaughtered? For 400 years, who was here there to help the African Americans that they had to suffer for 400 years? Or even for the Jews? Six million Jews yeah. dead. It was not until people riled up and opened their mouths before absolutely opinion started to change and so it's just for people want to say back and well god will take care of it i said well it's never happened in history never god wants it but we have to cooperate with or whatever they call god or that spirit or that deity that entity but it's up to us to do it and so i told him i asked him I'm talk, you know I, I made a statement you know the shortest sentence in the bible is i am there's nothing mm. else you can say that stands on it on just I am. Now, who can say that? Yeah. But I said, I'm I, with know you. Who, I know I am. I know who I am is. He says, yeah, I know who I am. And I know who I am is. And I am is in me. He's in you. And out of that, that certainty that you're just more than just a collection of flesh and bones and that we have a spiritual obligation to evolve. And so it's time to, to, you know, unplug from the football and what's happened with J-Lo. Not that those things are bad or all of the distractions that we're getting on Hollywood media, but we got to get plugged in, get our, our pineal glands tapped in, and so we can get our spiritual compass. Just like the geese know when it's time to start flying south and come back. North. We <laughs> have darn right about that. 
Yeah. yeah. We got yeah, it. So I, I'll tell you, I woke up. Together. <laughs> I, w- I woke up and some said inventory, everything you've done, what you can do, your assets, resources. And then I realized the only reason I'm in this situation right now, because I'm I, I haven't used everything I got, you know, and I'm like, OK, you know what? Now I'm, they're going to witness the power they're going to. And I said that to my audience because I love them. So they, but they're going to witness the change. They're going to see the greatness that I, I bring to the table and things that I've done, things I've already know, but you try to wait till the moment is right. Forget that. No better time than now. You know what I'm saying? And, and now is the word. There'll be no more uh, of, of, of everything else. And so today is the day, you know, to, to begin the process. And, you know, I'll be, you know, doing some other stuff, but it's, it's coming clear and clear uh, now and just trying to figure out how to uh, grow it and and like I'm telling people, our health is our, our weapon and uh, wealth is the shield because it's not so much, you know, these people can protect themselves. They got money to go build a bunker. They got money to uh, and, and of course, they got their health and all this stuff. But, you know, and I said again before I get you out of here, I did not realize it until I was really pushing preparedness and I start going to these preparedness meetings and our community just wasn't there in, in white or black, but they're just a segment of the population. If shit hit the fan, we they can't do nothing about it. And they're just going to lay down anyway. And, and I don't know why all this talk is going because preparation is everything, you know, and that's preparing your mind, getting your, your thoughts, getting your body. And for me, I, I can't go run off into the mountain if I needed to go hide in the wilderness. Not not, not in this body. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm going to be like, save yourself. And I don't mean it. Don't leave me. You know, <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm going to be admirable about it. Oh, y'all going to save yourselves. No, don't. Li- y'all carry me. But I, who should do that, right? You should be able to run on your own two feet. So, you well, know, man, all of that is good. Just having provisions even. Having enough food set aside that you can make it. Absolutely. Days. Absolutely. I, the little things I don't think people do. Uh, and so I'm going to make some resources. Uh, I vowed that every week, uh, in a few months, I'm going to give somebody a survival kit. I'm going to give 1000 survival kits out over the next few years. And that may cost me about a hundred grand, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to make sure at least thousand family by my hand will be ready for something. So we're going to do it. Yeah. Well, I want to thank right. you for uh, for bringing me in. Bringing look, me look, it's eleven eleven. See, I spoke, I spoke that, and it is eleven eleven. See, wow. that's when you, that's when you know you you're on point right there. That's that what it, I'm talking about. The, undeniable the conspiracy. Undeniable, right there. So we're we're gonna do it. And uh, all right, brother, we'll talk. I'll give you a call tomorrow. All right, sounds good. All right, all right, much 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 love to you. All right, all right. So that is the bishop. Uh, my buddy there and so we're going to be doing some project black yeah i'm just tripping so y'all can't see it but maybe it's still there my 11 11 is still on my clock but uh that's how we roll in pretty much and uh yeah so y'all can learn a lot from daryl i mean the man is has got the story the powerful uh and so we've been working on a few things and and everything else but y'all do need to get one of them puppies from him so if y'all want a dog make sure y'all get a dog uh, and pretty much, uh, Shanna, is it said she was trying to wait? I haven't got an email from you if you was trying to send me your cash out information, but if you want to put it on the screen, otherwise, I would have to believe that I may never receive it because I haven't got it. But anything, anything else anybody want to cover, or do I just want to thank uh, each and every one of you, um, to to. Being here tonight, um, unexpected. I didn't expect Daryl to hop in, and so that was just a bonus. And so I appreciate y'all to 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 do that. I may even uh, cut the video up later and and do some things. So, um, but anyway, if you want to, uh, I put it on the screen this last time. If you want to support the show, we're a community show, and also if you want to be part of Operation Thrive, yes, it is going to be a opportunity for some people. It's going to be an opportunity for people to partner with me and some more heavy hitter people that we're going to put a plan together where we're going to help people in the health and wellness, but we're going to make money and we're going to put that money back out there. So now is the time. 
Uh, but being with the right people and partnerships is going to be good. And so Operation Thrive is in effect. And this is where the truth seekers we're going to uh, elevate over and ignite over the elites. That's the acronym for Thrive. Uh, if you want, you can send me an email or give you some information or you can just buy products and get your health back, you know, because that's how you you'll support the show anyway. But contact me if you're serious and you want to partner with me. Otherwise, you can go to the website. You can go and get a couple of some coffee or you can get uh, a few other things. You can find other products. You can go to Lil Peer. That's one of the people I'm partnering with. Uh, Lilpeer.com forward slash Roderick. And, 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 and when you do and you get some coffee for the second month, I'm going to either send you a mug or you can get a T-shirt from us for coffee and all that. So I'll get that out to you. If you have not gotten your Project Black shirt with the seal of Project Black, the Black Lee of Alien Contact Knowledge, you definitely might want to do that as well uh, and pretty much. And so uh, I just want to thank everybody. hope you enjoy the show tonight. And uh, we will get going from there. And much love to all of you uh, that uh, have supported the show tonight and everything else. And so uh, we will get on with that. So anyway, that's it. Your eyes are useless when your mind is blind. You have to think why. And uh, and. A good bit of history, the greatness of Nicole with the eclipse glasses. So that is one of our future mentor photos of the week. That's a photo of the week. So, and then the other photo is we don't really know who this is. Is he the rainbow light or me and the moon? But that's the second photo of the week uh, of the bonnet lady. Okay. So those are our photos of the week. And uh, y'all. Oh, there. So we're good to go because <laughs> we got jokes. We got jokes. Yeah, we got jokes. We got jokes. Where's the devil?